right, what is going on everybody? Welcome, hope everybody's having a fantastic day, night, wherever you are. What is up everybody? Let's see, who do we got here? Steven, what's up you crazy mofos? What's up Steven? We got Nate here, Apollo. We got Freddy's in the house. Hope y'all are having a great day, evening. Steven, hope you're feeling better and good. These muscle relaxers are slowly kicking in. Oh no. Guys, if we start to see like some gibberish from Steven, just a bunch of letters and numbers, you know he has done a straight face plant into his keyboard and he is completely knocked out. Uh, okay. You know, you know that why that is? I think uh, Steven's back's hurting because, what did you say it was your back? If something's hurting, but I think it's probably because you picked up so many games from the convention. It's probably what it was, man. They should really have some warning labels on these uh, heavy ass boxes. Uh, yeah, I'm good, man. Curtis in the house. Tiffany, what's up, guys? Uh, Andrew, I have the utmost faith that you are going to completely demolish the evil <laughs> held within this game. You have got this. Thank you, Freddy. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much. Magnificently awesome. Dude, Freddy's still still killing it with the sayings. All right, it's a uh, savage beast of a human being. There we go. Happy Thursday. Absolutely. Last two days were the worst, but I'm ready to enjoy with my brethren tonight. Absolutely. Steven's already started drinking. Cool. We are going to be drinking uh, the same thing that I did last time. Mass Agave Classic. I know this is Mike's favorite. Uh, there's Mike in the house. I told Steven to take a wagon. Yeah, you did, dude. You did. Mike, I know this is your favorite. I have been really enjoying this stuff, so I still have more in the fridge. Got to use it up. So that's what I'm going to be drinking tonight. Uh, seen the movie of this? No, I have not. I have not. Uh, that was the same guy that played the Highlander, though, wasn't it? I think that was the same guy. It is your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift with the knees, man. Host, hoisting that golden chalice. Yeah, man. Yeah. Maybe it is from that. Maybe it is. All right. So, glad to have you guys. We are going to be playing Solomon Kane. Now, I know I asked you guys on the uh, on the Discord if we were going to continue the game I started on Halloween. We are not. Tim, what's up, man? Sounds tasty. Good luck with the sh game tonight. Thank you so much, Tim. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, Diplomatico Rum. Thank you, Raf. Yeah, Raf recommended that, right? Awesome. Awesome, Nate. All right. So we, uh, I know I asked you guys to continue that game I did from Halloween. However, I am not. Um, there were a few things such as her errata that I found and, uh, and plus the scenario itself, or at least just that, uh, yeah, I guess you could say scenario just seemed maybe it wasn't the, the most exciting for stream. So we are going to switch it up. The errata of the errata. <laughs> uh, no joke, Stephen. Uh, this is uh, this is a game that uh, could use that. I don't have the errata though. Um, I did look it up, and with some of these cards, there's only minor things that have changed, and it's basically just wording uh, to make people understand a little bit more. But nothing as far as the game has changed. This game really struggles though, man. I was doing some testing last night. This game really struggles with that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things in here that could be clarified a little bit more on the cards. Uh, some of the stuff really just doesn't make any sense. And I think I said that in my review as well. It's that like some of these and the way it works is you'll go through the game and it'll say, okay, flip open or flip over a discovery card. And then you read the discovery card and you do what it tells you. Some of these just didn't even make any sense. You would turn it over and it just wasn't cohesive with the story. It was like, it was a completely different part. And then sure enough, you would look it up and there was a rata for the card. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be there or add this to make more sense. This game really struggles with that, man. So much so that it can really kind of, you know, start to piss you off. You know, the game overall is fantastic. I really love this game. But when you encounter some stuff like that and you're like, okay, I need to look up online on BGG. Uh, then come to find out Mythic sold. Uh, they have, I don't know if it's for sale, but an errata pack, at least for season one, which is what we're playing with. Uh, you know, they're selling an, an errata pack. There's a bunch of cards, a bunch of this stuff in the books. So it, it can really throw you off sometimes. It really can. Uh, so it's pretty smooth. Got a sweet orange citrus taste. Nice, Nate. Nice. 
Yeah, my man with the uh, citrus flavor. Absolutely. Sleeving merchants. All I think <laughs> how happy you would be. Yeah, look. We're civilized today, boys. See? Got some sleeves in the house. Not everything is sleeved. I only kind of... There's a lot of cards in this game. I kind of only sleeve the stuff that I'm going to be handling the most. Sleeve TMNT. Nice. Just for Curtis. <laughs> yeah. Hope you sleevers get a paper cut. <laughs> Want to be a plastic cut? Be a plastic cut, man. All right, so. Solomon Kane. All right, the story that we're going to be playing through is the Blue Flame of Vengeance. All right. This is probably one of the thickest books in here. Now, the way that these books usually go is that there's stories and scenes. There's like two parts. With the stories... Excuse me. You don't have any minis out on the board. There's no board itself. There's basically just your virtue and your virtue board with the virtue cards. And it essentially becomes just a card game. Uh, but I really like the card game. And usually what happens is you're supposed to illuminate your Solomon Kane's path with these light tokens. And then depending on how many light tokens you place on and you can use this book... Um, to place the light tokens and depending on how many light tokens you have it would tell you to go to a different part in this book so it, essentially you could play through the same book and you could have different results a different story if you will uh, one of the cool things about this is there's just it's very thematic there's just story flowing all throughout this whether it's from uh, this book or more in particular the cards I really enjoy games where you're playing through and it continues the story throughout the actual scenario that you're playing not just read from the book you know you get into the game two hours three hours in my case four or five hours go by and then you read more at the end it kind of it takes you out of the story a little bit not with Solomon Kane or even Mac and Arcana. You have these constant cards throughout the game reminded of what's going on in the scenario. So I really like that. Oh, let's see. Uh, Malibu is gross. Stop being modest. Uh, Tim, that is the downside to crowdfunding games. Yeah, like when games have additional uh, printing to fix errors. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that does kind of seem like um, oh, Bloodborne is like that awesome. That makes me even more excited for the game. Uh, and yeah, Tim, true. That is true. But I, it does seem like Mythic does have the issue a little bit more than other companies. And you know what? I, I don't care about misprints or anything like that. But it's it's kind of pretty bad in this. Almost like they really should have had maybe some fresh eyes go over the cards. You know, because you can get in that echo chamber. If you really start to understand the game, maybe you you don't you already know the scenario in and out, so you don't really all these cards maybe make sense to you. But if you got some other people that, and I don't know what their process is, right? They could have done this, but maybe you get some other people and they're reading the cards and they're like, ah, oh, that doesn't really make any sense. Because you can go online on on Board Game Geek and other forums, and you can see the exact same thing that I'm saying. It's just some of the stuff is pretty bad. Uh, but with that being said. Uh, we are going to be playing, like I said, the Blue Flame of Vengeance. We have our virtue here. Now, Solomon Cain is slightly different from other crawlers in that the fact that um, you are playing as essentially as a virtue. If you're playing a multiplayer game, and I guess you could do this two-handed, there are four virtues that you play as or can pick from. And so prudence, uh, justice, temperance and courage and they each do something slightly different uh, as far as like maybe an ability or something like that we are going to be playing as providence and this is a dedicated solo virtue she has uh, some benefits over the other virtues but is semi weaker in others and we'll talk about how to use all this uh, i really like this whole aspect of it but we're essentially playing as a virtue who is guiding Solomon Kane on his journeys. We're going to be directing Solomon Kane. The virtue is going to be aiding him, whether he fights, talks, explores, uh, stuff like that. Uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Tim. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't mind it. It's just when it gets too bad, you know, almost to the point that it, it completely doesn't make sense and you got to look up stuff online a bunch of times, you know, it can. that's when it starts to be like, oh, come on, man. Like, again, again. But it's still it's still not going to stop me from enjoying the game. Uh, let's see. Dear sweet nine pound baby Jesus. Please let Tharkis Dungeon not have any rules mistakes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right, Steven. Uh, yeah, you're delirious already, dude. The meds and the, the alcohol are already kicking in. Darkest Dungeon, I think, is even a larger production than this. So, I don't know. I don't know. Not one of us know anything about temperance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I love Steven's comment in the Discord where he was basically like, I'm trying to save money by going all in. <laughs> it's like the perfect Kickstarter motto, right? Well, the cool thing is you could somebody could also play as the darkness. I've never played as this. I haven't even played as the other virtues. I've solely played this game as a solo game with um, Providence. I wouldn't be opposed to playing this multiplayer. It's just I kind of you know it. For me, this is kind of like a like I don't know. I've really been enjoying it with solo with Providence. Uh, with that being said. We do also have a board up here with additional stats, and these are basically modifiers throughout the game. If we were to perform fight tests with strength, uh, searches with clarity, talking using compassion, and then the danger is essentially uh, adding more shadows to the board when we do get to a, an actual scene. If these ever go below uh, one, we lose the game, or if this ever goes to 11, we lose the game as well. So with that being said, um, let's uh, let's talk the story. Okay, so we're going to be starting at 1A, and again, this is the Blue Flame of Vengeance. So it says, uh, the blades cross with a sharp clash of venomous steel, showering blue sparks. Across those blades, hot eyes burn into each other, hard, inky black eyes and volcanic blue ones. Breath hisses between close, locked teeth. Feet scruff the, uh, the sword, advancing, retreating. He of the black eyes faints and thrusts as quick as a snake strikes. The blue-eyed youth parries with a half-turn of a steely wrist, and his counterstroke is like the flash of summer lightning. Solomon Cain watches this drama unfold from a vantage point above the beach, but his hawk-like gaze is more concerned with the mysterious ship at anchor that forms the backdrop of the duel. First blood is taken by the youth, and the magistrate steps in to end the contest, though neither man seems happy with the outcome. After swords, after words with his second, the lad storms off to cool his ire, which leads him past Kane's post. Their introductions made, Kane has a question for young Jack Hollister. What make you of yonder ship standing off on as off and on as she hath done since yesterday's daybreak? A lean finger a lean finger stabs seaward, and Jack shakes his head. She lies too far out. I can't make naught of her. Have you ever heard of one Jonas Hardracker, who men call the Fishhawk? Hollister started. That dreaded name was known all on all the coasts of the civilized world. That bloody pirate? The last I heard of him, he was purported to be cruising the Caribbees. Cain nodded. Lies travel ahead of a fast craft. So, we have just witnessed this duel, right? And we talked to this young Jack Hollister. So we're kind of curious about this ship as well. You're going to read Stephen a bedtime story? Uh, that's true dedication to your subscriber. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. So we have two choices that we can make, okay? Um, we can go to 2A which says keeps, uh, we can choose to keep watch on the young Jack in fear that some foul play may befall him. Or we could go to 2B. Head to the local tavern and seek more information about the mysterious ship. Now, usually I would offer you guys to pick. However, I did prep for 2A and I did look through them and that one is going to be a lot better as far as entertaining and stuff like that. The other one is basically we're just going around talking. Uh, the other one potentially might have some battle. So 
uh, we're going to go to 2A. It's going to be a lot better. We also have on this, uh, and this, this is slightly different from what I'm used to in that usually the first thing you do in the book is you do the story, which you would do the card game, and then you would, looks like the camera's out. Dan, where's Dan? And you would do the story, you would do the card game, and then you would go to a scene. But this looks like we're just going to choose one, and then we're going to go straight to a scene with the minis on the board and stuff. And this is also going to tell us where our stats start uh, for each of these. And we already have done so on the board. I see Steven is out, man. He's out. Out cold. Okay. So. Um, let's see, should we set it up first? Yeah, let's set it up first. Yeah, let's set up the board first. We'll do that. And then we'll read. Anthony, what's up, man? Late to the party, but I'm here. What's up, dude? How's it going, man? We just read a little bit of backstory. And now we're about to set up a scene. So we're going to have some minis on the board. Get Solomon McCain on here. Uh, let's get this one out. And one of the things I do kind of like about Solomon McCain is every once in a while I do enjoy having uh, a game with a smaller board instead of just like an entire spread, you know, which takes up just a huge amount of table space. That was an excellent rating. Thank you, man. I started to, I started to stumble a little bit there towards the end. Got a little rocky. Got a little rocky. Good bro. Had to run uh, CVS down the street for some uh, snacks. There you go, dude. There you go, man. Thank you, Steven. Okay, so we have our board here. Um, now it says uh, Providence here. Our virtue is going to start in this spot right here. And these minis are fantastic. There is one thing I really like about Mythic, and they do have some pretty solid minis. Pretty good detail. And this is the virtue Providence. It's going to start right here. We got old Solomon Cain with the muskets. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to start right here. All right. We have two shadows. And these, these guys right here. These shadows. And these, these guys are basically coming, trying, they're only seeking out Solomon Kane. They're trying to uh, get you know, go after Solomon Kane. It's going to affect us in different ways. Uh, so we're going to try to not let that happen. So we're going to have one start here and another one starts here. Now we also have uh, the two sworded thug. Who, who is that? Well, let's put Jack. I think this is Jack right here. He's going to start right here. All right. And then we have uh, Dagger Thug and Sam. Okay, so Sam is going to be right here. These two are essentially like battling right now. We have the Dagger Thug. This guy, he's like standing by witnessing this stuff. Two Sworded Thug is going to be right here. The Pistol Thug is right here. And then the Sword Thug is right here. Now we also have to put these tokens out on the board. We got one here. This here and here. Okay. Uh, next, we have the locations where the shadows uh, can potentially spawn when they come back. And these have letters on them, X, Y, and Z. I know you guys probably can't see these, but I can. Uh, let's put this here. And where's Dan? I'm surprised I haven't seen Dan. I thought Dan was into this game. And he was the one demanding other people to be active on the stream. Unbelievable. The nerve of this guy. And then, uh, so let's keep that there for one second. So that is going to be our scene. Unless he's just lurking in the shadows, right? Which is probably the case. Okay. So we have... Uh, this is Kane's protection, all right? Jack Hollister awakes from a dream-haunted slumber. 
He sits, he sits up in bed and stares about him. Outside, the moon has not risen, but in his window, the starlight frames a head and a pair of bro broad shoulders. A warning, shh, comes to him like a serpent's hiss. Slipping his sword from the scabbard hanging on the bedpost, Jack rises to approach the window. A bearded face set with two small sparkling eyes looks in at him. The man breathes deeply as if from a long run. Bring the sword, lad, and follow me, comes the urgent whisper. He's got she. How now? Who's got who? Sir Garge, is the chilling whisper. He sent she a written with your name on it, bidding her to come to the rocks, and his rogues grab she and... Mary Garvin? Truth as ever was, master. The room reels. Hollinser had anticipated the attack on himself, but he had not sus supposed the villainy of Sir George's nature went deep enough for the abduction of a helpless girl. Kane observes all from a concealed place by Hollinster's cottage. When the young man follows the villain out into, onto the foggy moors, the Puritan trails them like a liquid shadow in the midst. There we go. I'm still at the watering hole. Is it, is it safe? Can I speak freely? <laughs> of course, man. Of course. All right, so... Young Jack Hollister, all right, has just awoken and been told that his uh, his woman friend has been abducted, okay? So he is following this guy, all right? I guess they're not battling right now. He's following this guy. Yeah, so maybe let's turn him like this. Back to, I guess he knows the location, right, of the girl. So he's, Jack Hollister is following him back here. Now, the way that this is going to work, after our turn each round, they're going to, this guy is going to go to this token right here. Once he gets there, we remove the token, and Jack right here is automatically going to follow him into the space. So the way that this is working is they're going to follow this trail all the way around here into this location. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. So, we have, um, uh, let's see, let's see. We have 10 darkness cards, and these darkness cards are essentially our timer for the game. They're also going to have some uh, negative effects for us, potentially. Well, I wouldn't say negative effects in a scene. In a story, they would. But in a scene, they're essentially just telling these guys, the enemies, how to move around and potentially spawning new shadows. Now, the way that the shadows work, there is a hard limit. Right now we have two on the board, one, two, and you can see that there, our token is within the two limit range. So we can't have any more shadows on the board, but as soon as we would get another danger, now we're in the three shadow limit, and we could have more on there. Uh, so let's shuffle these, and the book says we're gonna draw 10 darkness cards. Gonna draw 10 darkness cards. Okay. I think this is good. And we'll do this. Maybe two more. One, two. Okay. We got one, two, three, four. Let's cut it up. Five, six, seven, eight. Another cut. Nine, ten. Okay. So there's our ten. All right. So we're going to put these over here. We do have some event cards. We're going to shuffle these up quick. Scared her away, Dan. <laughs> yeah. That sounds right. That sounds right, man. <laughs> uh, so these event cards are basically going to be if uh, one of these guys searches in the area or any other... Uh, test is conducted, whether it's a fight again, a search, or a talk, we would reveal one of these cards and they have different numbers on them and we would add that to whatever our current stat is to give us our final number to determine uh, what discovery card we would draw. And uh, that's essentially kind of how, like, that's a major thing for this game. There's not like dice rolling for combat or anything like that. It's essentially using like almost kind of skill checks 
to see to get a value to determine what you do. But then if you like you get a certain value, maybe it'll say deal a wound to the enemy, stuff like that. So I think this is good for this. We'll set this up here as well. Uh, let's shuffle up our deck. And we do have to draw some discovery cards. And then we should be, there's not too much else we have to do. This compass here is, uh, you know, it tells you the north, east, south, and west, just in case you've been drinking a little bit too much and you have to, uh, you know, remember uh, your directions. So it's, it's pretty handy. It's pretty handy. Important question. I've been meaning to ask you what's your stance on s s Scrapple? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a particular stance. <laughs> Is that a big PA thing? I don't know. I don't know. I moved up here when I was like 16. I've never really heard that, man. And plus the area I moved to, it's mostly uh Marylanders. Cuz it's like everybody from Maryland comes right around. We're like we're like right over the line. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Oh, uh, you got me. But uh don't hold back on my account. There you go. Okay, so let's uh, uncover these discovery cards. So we have to draw 301, 307, I already have them laid out here, 326, and 343. All right, let's put these over here. Central PA. Is that where you are, Tim? Central PA? That's pretty cool. Okay. I didn't know that, Tim. That's pretty crazy. Close, man. All right, so let's look at these uh, discovery cards. So it says, uh, Treading in the Night. Solomon Kane scans the courtyard of the Banway Manor. The thick fog proves a valuable ally in the moonless night. All Kane has to do is avoid getting close to the torches. Now we got the torches laid out here. But it says, Place a light token on each torch. So we got our light tokens out here and we're going to place a light token on them, covering up each one of these. Oh, I got you. Oh, right near Harrisburg. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really close, man. That's really close to me. That's cool. All right. So we place those. When a scout searches and it says that all of these thugs... We have the one, two, three, We've got the one, two, three, and four. Whenever these four guys uh, search, if Solomon Cain is adjacent to one of these tokens, they get a plus two modifier to their search test. When a scout searches, if Solomon Cain is in a fog area, you can see these fog areas here, uh, they get a minus two to their search test. Now, I didn't confirm this, but I would assume the way that, like if we were here, right, we are adjacent to this and we are in a fog area, they would get a plus two and then a minus two for us being in the fog area. I'm assuming that's just gonna be a zero. I don't think anything else like crosses anything out. Or not crosses anything out, but I don't think we like prioritize one over the other. So like we're in a fog area, so they get a minus two to their uh, search. It says when Sam enters one of these, a space with one of these tokens, remove it. If there are no more on the board, the chapter ends. All right. The minis are nice. The minis are nice, man. Yep. That's good, man. Yeah, it's always it's always that battle with board game overhead shots. I'm always one that like, you know, some of those streams you watch and it's like, it's it seems like it's way too far out there. I can't tell, you know, kind of what's going on on the board. So I like to keep it semi-close. You don't need to see every single thing out here. You know, like I got this, uh, this is a cloud that we can store stuff on. You don't need to see every single thing. We got a bunch of cards over here. Uh, but yeah, so I'm glad that you guys can see those. That's nice. Okay, so it says, Remains in play until Solomon Cain is hidden. And that is this card right here. The, 
The next one is eavesdropping. Solomon Kane must stay close to Sam and Jack and eavesdrop for any information regarding the fish hawk. So again, we're trying to get some information um, from these guys about that mysterious ship that we just read about in the previous thing. So this says, place two light tokens on this card. Okay, so we have done so. When virtues place light tokens, and that's a huge part of this game to place light tokens. Uh, when virtues place light tokens, they can instead choose to move light tokens from the torches. So instead of just placing them from the pile, we can choose to remove these and then place them. Um, so we can remove them, choose to remove these and then place them on this card. We can choose to remove these, place them on this card. That's the only way light tokens can be put on this card. And we'll read why that's important in just one second. Um, if they are within two areas of Sam and Jack, and I did see this in a forum uh, that was confirmed that the virtue has to be within two spaces of Sam and Jack in order to remove the light tokens. Now, I'm also assuming that can be any light token. It doesn't also have to be the light tokens because the person asked, is it the virtue that has to be within two or the light tokens? And all they confirmed with was the virtue has to be within two. So we could be within two here and then say remove this one. Um, this is the only way that light tokens can be removed from torches. A miniature can never enter a torch space. If Solomon Kane loses hidden, we would reveal additional discovery cards. So what is hidden? Hidden, this card right here says, the stealthy approach was unnatural to the Puritan. Cloaking himself in deceit and subterfuge were against his nature, but needs much. And so Solomon Cain crept slowly forward. So this says, when this card is in play, mortal enemies cannot interact with Solomon Cain. Now, mortal enemies are anything besides virtues and shadows. These are like supernatural things. So... Again, these guys are looking for us, right? We just read that they kind of like, uh, I think we just read. Oh yeah, we're about to read that. We're about to read that. That's right. So these guys are going to be looking for us, but they can't interact with us directly. We're like lurking in the shadows. They can't see us. Um, so they can't interact with us. When Solomon Kane activates a fight or talk test, discard this card. So we would discard this and then we would be revealed. Whenever Solomon Cain moves into an area containing a, no a mortal enemy whilst hidden, that enemy performs a search test at the end of a virtue player's turn. So if we were to move into this an area with an enemy, they would then perform a search test, possibly revealing us. So what is the search? Did you hear anything out your way, Sid? I swear there's something out there. I heard nothing. Besides, no one is daft enough to mess with Master Banway. So, these guys heard something, right? We kind of kicked over a little stick or a rock or something like that. So it says, when an enemy scout searches, the distance between that scout and Solomon Cain provides a base number, okay? So if we're in the same area, they get a base value of two, all right? If they, we were adjacent, they get a base value of one. And if we're any more than that, they get zero. So the way that it would work would be, let's pretend we are in here, maybe right here, all right? So we're more than two away. This guy's scouting, right? We're more than two away, so they get a base value of zero. However, if we look at this card, uh, when they search, if we are adjacent to one of these tokens, they get a plus two. So now we would do a plus two, reveal a card, that would be a number, and then that tells us what the value, uh, what card to draw, and it would tell us what happens. That's essentially how it would work. It's not too complicated, but then there's different things for fight. There's different things for talking. There's different things for uh, searching and stuff like that. So, top tier. <laughs> the heck you did. <laughs> Sounded like Tim. <laughs> Oh, shit. That's hilarious, man. Okay. So, we can 
it says search uh, for us. So let's look at the keywords and stats. All right, we already revealed these. We got 10 darkness cards. Cornbread fully, nice, nice. All right, so we got Solomon Cain can search up to four. And then uh, again, we would use, if we're searching, we would use clarity. Um, so we would right now we would get a plus one. We can get additional stats from our virtue player here. Plus some cards might say give a plus uh, modifier to this action. And then we could, uh, you know, look at, uh, you know, it tells us what the cards are depending on the value. Usually the higher number you get, the better. It tells us Van Sam is a villain and seeker. The seeker just means he's going to be going after this. Jack is a follower, and usually the follower would actually come after Solomon Cain, I believe, uh, or the seeker would. Yeah, I think follower as well. But in this case, it says Sam. So again, he's following Sam. Uh, he thinks Sam has, you know, taken his, or somebody has taken his woman, and Sam's going to help him out. And then we got the thugs, which are scouts. Those are the only scouts. So when the darkness card specifies a scout, uh, it is going to be for these guys. Um, and then it says, at, by the end of the chapter, all right, if we run out of darkness cards or if we have to end in another way, if we have six plus light tokens on 307, which was this card, we already have two on there, uh, we place two of these tokens on there. And then this basically says the outcome, if we have two, proceed to 8F, 8A, and then it says uh, what these different things do. So that essentially tells us where to go next in the story. And we, so basically what we're trying to do is usually the more, the better that you have. So we're at least trying to get six or more light tokens on here. And again, the only way that we can get them onto here is if our virtue is two spaces away from these guys and we uh, place a light token, whether by doing it from the cards or something like that, we can remove it from the board, one of these torches, and then place it here. And why that's also good is if we start removing these, now when we go to here and the scout searches, it says adjacent to a light token. Now we wouldn't be adjacent to a light token anymore. So it also helps us in getting closer. So that's essentially what's happening, all right? If that makes any sort of sense. And then when we get to actually going, we'll talk about all that stuff uh, as we go. So for now, let's set this over here and the game is gonna start with our turn. So how this works, we already did shuffle this, but I'll do it again. So we have eight cards here. We're gonna divide these up into two stacks of four and we can look at both of these and we can determine what stack we want. And we have different things like move light tokens. This uh, is a move too, so we can move Solomon Kane on the board. And you can also see we have different symbols. We're gonna roll dice. It's gonna start with three dice, and then it's gonna have different symbols on these dice. And then basically, we'll have two cards on either side, so we'll have five total actions that we can do. And we essentially have to use these dice to fulfill these spaces, and then we can perform this action. We could also store these dice in a reserve in case we don't have anything that we wanna do, and we can use that for later the crosses count as wilds. So we can use those for anything. In addition to that, kind of the only mitigation you have is you can choose one die and you can either choose to flip that to its alternate side, uh, which you can see the symbols kind of match. So we got like this heart with the feathers coming out and now we have the hollowed uh, position. Now we have this circle. On the other side, we have this circle kind of with the thorns on it. And that's essentially just how it works. And we have two wild sides. So we can choose to flip this to its alternate side, or we can choose to re-roll it. So we, that's, that's essentially our mitigation. Past that, we can't do anything else. Um, and then you'll see some of these, like we have three dedicated spots. As soon as we might activate this card, it will go into the discard and we would place another card down here. So these two uh, will be always in rotation. Uh, these are permanent. Now, if we choose to like do move one position, we can move Solomon Kane, or it says we can place a light token. Now, we can't use that to place a light token on here. We can only remove that from here. But what we could do 
is on our board, you can see Providence special abilities. We can cover up one of these darkness spaces by placing a light token. And now we get we can roll plus one die, dice. So we can roll four dice now. We can play to put it on plus one aura size. So usually she will aid Solomon Kane if she is adjacent to him. Now it can count for two spaces away, which is pretty strong. Or we could do plus X to all tests. Now, what does that mean? So right now, if we have this covered, it would be a plus one to all tests because we have one. But as soon as we put two on here, now we got a plus two. So it'll really start to benefit our tests the more that we have with this covered up. All of a sudden, we got three. Plus, maybe if we do another card that says talk four, right? So now we have a base of four. We got two covered up, so we got additional two. So we're at six, plus we're doing talk, so we get a plus one. So now we're at seven, draw a random card, that's our number, right? So that's essentially how it works. What the hell is Scrapple? <laughs> okay. Steven's gone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Steven has left the building. <laughs> All right, so speaking of, I need to drink a little bit more. Okay, so we have, this is a move two, or move up to two light sockets, talk for or gain two white dice, and the white dice can be stored on our cloud. We can essentially use this for any symbol, uh, but we would also have to pay, in addition to the dice, we would have to go down on the compassion track, that's a minus one, so we would have to also pay using that. Um... Explore for or draw two um, blessing tokens. We'd have to go down on clarity or place two light tokens. And this one's pretty good, but it does cost four symbols. Alternatively, we have uh, we can add plus one to strength, compassion, or clarity, but we'd also have to pay a danger. So this would uh, tick up, but we could do that twice. If providence is on the board, repeat this action. We could add or remove one darkness card. And what why that might be important is if you want to extend the game a little bit more, we might have to add cards to this deck. We have a fight for or gain two green uh, dice. And the green are essentially used for if we draw one of these random numbers and we don't like the result, we can spend one of these dice. Or we have minus one danger or add an additional light token. So the card play is might be pretty quick so i think what we're first going to do we're going to choose this stack all right and then from here we can choose which cards we play and i think we're just going to do these so we're going to do minus one danger or add a light token or add or remove one darkness card um you know what we're going to place this one here these other two cards will be our hand and these will just shuffle up, and this will be our draw pile. Let's see, uh, leftover pieces. <laughs> yeah. I've got a Legion match Saturday. Nice, Steven. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. Dude, you're going to have to take pictures. Let us know how that goes, man. That's so cool. That is so cool. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, I mean... Just, just throw some salt on there, right? Yeah, still a lot of salt. Actually, sounds tasty. Let me see. Anything would sound tasty to you right now, right? Bacon. Yeah, bacon is nice, man. Bacon is good. Okay, uh, we are ready to rock. So it is going to be our turn. So let's roll three. And let's just get this uh, party started. All right, right off the bat, we got two wilds. Awesome. Awesome. So what are we going to do? We could, we could place a light. So we could do two wilds on here. We could place a light and we could remove this because we are within two spaces. I already put three on here in case we want to move. Alternatively, we could start putting them on here. I think we're going to end up saving this in our reserve. So do I actually like this result? I don't think so. So let's we're gonna keep the wilds and we're gonna reroll this. All right. So we got this. We're gonna end up placing that in our reserve. 
So we are going to place a light. We are going to place a light. Where are we going to put that, though? Are we going to remove it? Or start beefing her up? It's a good question. I think I'm going to remove it. So again, when virtues place light, which we just, this is a place one light, they can instead choose to move a light from torches onto this card if they are within two areas of Sam and Jack, which we are. Okay, so we did that. We performed that action. We didn't use any of these cards, so this isn't going to go away. It looks like it's out of focus. Looks like I'm going to have to take this off. Figure. Okay, there we go. pretty bland steven i just love food here yeah. yeah we can tell man we can tell always cooking up something and it looks tasty too all right where's dan with the twss okay so it's a british thing <laughs> okay all right so let's let's keep going so we just did this action right after our turn remember these guys are gonna go so this guy's gonna go here and this guy's gonna instantly follow him we're gonna remove this token now we're going to reveal a darkness card. So this is broken down into a few different things. The top part is going to be for stories, which we're not in. The second, uh, these parts down here are going to be for in a scene. This symbol right here means if they are within adjacent to uh, Solomon Cain, which there are no figures adjacent, and this is for everything else. So it says all sentries move to, there's no sentries, two scouts each move one south. So we can choose... Two of these scouts move one south. Now, what do we want to do with these guys? Maybe we want to have this guy go here. I guess we'll just have that guy go there. And the figures can only move, can only activate once. So then if it had uh, another thing with, with that said, like the westernmost scout does something, we've already activated him. The closest shadow moves two to engage. Now, I believe that's going to be this guy, this shadow. One, two, three, four. So one, two, moves two to engage. The farthest shadow moves two to threaten. One, two, we'll have them go right here. And all hunters move one and fight two. There are no hunters. And this last one would say spawn a shadow at Z. However, we already have two shadows on the board and that is our max right now. So we're not gonna do anything with that. Now it's back to us. So we're gonna roll three dice. Okay. That does fulfill this. I don't really like this result, so we could re-roll that, which I think we might end up doing. This shadow is starting to get close to Solomon Cain. We could do a move action, so we could move Solomon Cain here. That would put us adjacent to this. Oof. Um, I think either way, I wanna re-roll this. A wild nice so we got a wild here but we don't want to pay f use this to pay for anything if we don't have to so we could come here that would put us in a fog area and there's no light token around there anymore it is unfortunate we couldn't maybe do two place a light and move I would like place a light token on one of these as well as move if that's the case maybe I save this oh do I move do I move I think I move shadows are starting to get close though man Shadows are starting to get close. Maybe. Maybe we would do plus one to aura size. Mm, already tough call. I think I am going to do that plus one to aura size. So now we are influence. However, it's not really doing us anything right now. Yeah, I wish I got another symbol here. But it is what it is. So these guys are going to move to here. Okay. All right. So let's do the darkness card. 
Just drive it over to me. Yeah, there you go. All right, so nobody's still adjacent to us. Uh, one scout searches. Okay, one scout searches. All right, so let's have, uh, let's just have this scout search. Okay, we're gonna have this scout search. So he is two away. He has a base of zero right now. Got some beard hair on there. Uh, base stat of zero. Okay. And let's check to see if they do anything else. Uh, we're not adjacent to a light token and we're not in a fog area. So let's just draw a card and see what they get. So they get zero plus, and they're gonna use this number right here. So they get two. So let's see what two does. Search up to four, card 344. 344. One of Banway's thugs stops and turns towards Solomon's hiding place. There's a tense moment as he studies the area intently, staring into the inky blackness. Finally, the, the thug scratches his chin before he seemingly decides that it must have been the wind and turns his attention elsewhere. Solomon loosens his grip on the hilt of his rapier with momentary relief. The scout does not see Solomon. A virtue may place one wild into the reserve. Nice. We have avoided the search. We are in the shadows. We are using, we have been trained by Barman himself. Okay. So that was one scout searches. The closest scout searches, another search. So I guess that's going to be this guy now, because this guy already activated. So he's going to search. Same deal. We're not in any one of those. So he's got a base of zero plus three. So we already kind of know what this is going to be. This is going to be the same deal. Scout does not see Solomon. We're still hidden. A virtue may place one into their reserve. Now, I don't know the rules for this, so I am going to say let's swap this out with a wild. I don't know the rules with that. I would imagine it be like maybe as soon as you can place something. Maybe not. Should we err on the side of caution? We can do that. That's fine. I don't know if it's in the manual. I don't know. It's it's possible. All right, so we did this. Uh, the closest shadow moves two to engage. All right, so already we're getting some bad luck. So this guy, right when they enter, they go off the board. So now we're going to draw an event card. So it says, one virtue discards their left hand action card. So we're going to remove this. That's kind of the one we wanted. So discard that. And plus one danger or remove one light. Now we could go up a danger. We could go up a danger that would put us in five. So it would be three shadow that could spawn. Or we, we remove one light. I don't think I want to do that. We'll go to that. So we have just fulfilled this card. Okay. So we went up on the danger. The farthest shadow moves three to threaten. So this shadow is going to move. And it looks like it could go one, oh, if he goes there, one, two, three, that would be threatening. So he's right, now we get a negative modifier because we're around in the vicinity of this guy. All hunters, there are no hunters, and we spawn another shadow at Y. So this guy comes on. All right, so it's back to us, back to us. First, Andrew. See, look, I took it back. I got, I took it back, Nate. Right? Didn't take long at all. I know, right? What are we? An hour in? Yeah, that's not bad. Ooh, we got a really good roll, though. We got a really good roll. We got a lot of wilds, right? We could do a lot of stuff here. So, one of the cool things about the sh uh, the virtues is how do we eliminate these things? Well, when they come into our area, they instantly go away. However, if they were to enter enter a spot with a virtue or we were to enter a spot with a shadow with our virtue, the virtue essentially does like a shock wave. And the, uh, the shock wave gets rid of the shadows and adjacent and any other shadow that were adjacent to them. However, if we get a plus one aura size, that shock wave would be two spaces away. But it, a shadow has to move into her space. So even though it might be two spaces, the shadow might be two spaces away, the shockwave doesn't trigger. I don't really like this, so I think we're definitely going to have to move. Now, um, 
we can't place another card here yet until the end of our turn. So right now, we could... I might end up re-rolling this, this one here. I might end up re-rolling this. Okay. So, I mean, I could do two wilds here to move one. It's still, it's like, I'm not really liking that too much. I'm not really liking that too much. Um... I could put three here and it says place Providence onto the board if she were to be removed or move her one. I could move her into this area and move Solomon Kane into this area. So then if this shadow comes, he would wipe that away. However, if one of the scouts searches, we are adjacent to that and they're one space away. So they would get three right off the bat, which might not be good. That might not be good at all, but I'm not seeing too much else I might want to do. Um, move. I mean, I want to place more light tokens as well. I could move her and remove this light token. And make kind of travel this way a little bit easier. Yeah, just real this this one guy is really throwing me off right now. Um, I guess. Do we want to move her? Do we want to move her? And do we want to move? Ooh, it's a tough call. It is a tough call. I think. I think I am gonna remove this. I'm gonna do. I already re-rolled this, right? So then should I actually do this? Let's do let's do this right here. Let's do this right here. Okay, so we are going to mm. Yeah, let's do this. Place one light token. So we will remove this, place it here. We have four. And now let's activate this. Place Providence or move her once. I mean, I could, I could move her down here. I think instead, I think I might move her over. It looks like this is connected. I think I'm gonna move her here. Because again, we have to stay within two of these guys. I know I moved her further away. Maybe next time we can get a lot more movement. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Uh, first, let's, I guess, let's do this. We'll place this card, we'll draw up to hand, okay. Are right, these guys moved, right? Uh, let's do darkness card. All right, so there is a shadow moves one to engage. Oof. Mm, mm, mm. I did the test game last night. Uh, I played this a little bit. And man, it was, it was a lot better than this already. Uh, Curtis must have taken a muscle relaxer too. <laughs> Okay, so we have reveal one random sin card. <laughs> Let's shuffle these up. Mm. Okay. Sin card. Okay, envy. A painful or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. The life of a Puritan has placed many strict strictures upon Solomon Cain, and he feels envy to the freedom of others. Sensing his loss of dignity, the virtues begin to limit their support. Virtues cannot gain or use white, green, or any of these blessing cards. Remains in play. Now, we could cover this up with a light token to nullify this effect. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, and then plus this says, place one uh, blessing. So let's actually just take these blessings and these would go right onto the cloud, but again, we can't use these. Let's just draw from, let's cut it, draw from the middle. 
All right, so this is minus two danger. Okay, so we can place, we can use this if we cover this up to subtract the danger. All right, so that was this card fulfilled. Now what's the rest of this? Nobody else is adjacent. The closest scout searches. Okay, the closest scout looks like we have two. We'll just say it's uh, this guy. So this guy is going to search. Now he's two away. We have a base of he has a base of zero, and he gets a plus three. And we already know what the that is. Up to four is three forty four, which a virtue may place one wild into the reserve. Okay. Oh, it's next. Uh, two scouts each move one south. This guy can't move south. This guy can. Let's do one, two. Okay, the furthest shadow moves two to engage. Let's do one, two, and all hunters. And we would spawn one at X. Okay, uh, back to us. Let's roll our dice. Okay. Now the cool thing is we can flip this. We know on the alternate side would be the circle with the thorns fulfilling this, right? And then we could probably do a move. Maybe we do a move. Is there anything else that we can... I need more movement. I need more movement. I need more movement, man, mate. Um, mm, mm, mm. Why don't we at least do that? We're going to flip that. So we used our mitigation. Now, do we want to do anything else? Why are you passing them out, Steve? <laughs> I've given up on what the hell is going on. Just waiting to hear Andrew's new rules as he goes along. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, all right. Um, so what we could do, maybe, I don't want to move, I don't need a mover. I don't need a mover. So I think I, all I want to do is this and just have like a better turn next time. And I think I might move Solomon Kane. But if I do this here, I'm within two. But I got to, I got to start moving him around. One. I got to start moving him around, right? So we are going to do this. Do we move or place? I think we move. See, here might work. I think we're going to go here because if we can also illuminate one of these other... Now we're in her aura. We're in her aura right now. So if we can get one of these... Yeah, so let's move one. We moved one. And we did remove this now, so we're good. Okay, so we did that. Do we want to discard anything? Yeah, let's... Let's discard this. We probably should have been doing that a lot earlier, right? And we'll just place this just to... Well, I don't think we need any more darkness cards right now. So we're going to discard this, place this. So we can draw up two more. All right, so here we go. Place two. And I think this is really going to be needed. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you can kind of cycle those out. And I think I was, I was kind of missing those missing doing that on the previous turns. Okay, so we did our turn. These guys are gonna move, right? And again, they just gotta get here and then it's gonna end. So I don't I don't foresee this going on too, too long. Okay, so they did that uh, darkness card. All right. Um, the only one adjacent is this scout and it says one scout moves one north, okay? No shadows. The closest scout searches, we already activated this guy, so maybe it's going to be this guy. So he's going to search. He's two away. We're not adjacent to a light token, and we're not in a fog area. So he has a base of zero plus two. We already have all of our wild, so that's not going to be anything. Uh, different players control the different virtues, and then you can take turns like you would all roll dice, and then you could say, okay, uh, I'm going to activate... I'm going to move Solomon Kane here. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make him do this. So maybe another character might have, you know, dice on the the fight, you know, and stuff like that. So you, like you can everybody's influencing Solomon Kane.
Okay. Um, so we did a search. We already did that. So the closest shadow moves to to engage. We're really getting nailed with these shadows. Oof. That's, that's bad, dude. That is bad. One virtue removes all dice from their reserve. <laughs> oh. I feel like that turn, that was going to be our big turn. Uh, that was going to be our big turn. Three wilds. That was going to be our big turn. And minus one clarity unless unless the temperance miniature, uh, I believe that is supposed to say virtue, is on the board. So we are not temperance. We are providence. So we are going to remove, go down on clarity. Going down one. Ugh. Quarterback in central. I haven't read too much about that. Um, yeah, there is. Yeah, so Steven, there's like there's like three different ways you can play the game. There's like the solo, and then each person can take control of another uh, virtue. So these, these would be used in a multiplayer game, and these have different uh, benefits uh, to them. So we got like aggression here for the courage, uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, and you can donate like on these boards, like you can donate dice and also reserve them. So it's, it's pretty cool. So another player could like say, okay, I'm going to put these dice on your board. So it's pretty cool. And then somebody could also play as the darkness. Yeah. I don't know, Curtis, it, it might be a thing. I don't know. Again, I've never played this, uh, multiplayer. I've only played it like this. Oh God, that was, that was brutal. Okay, that was the closest shadow. The furthest shadow moves two to threaten. So I think it could get away with one, two. Yeah, I believe that's the closest. All hunters, there are no hunters. And one would spawn at Y. Oh, God, dude, that wiped out all of our dice. Oh, man, dude. Uh, we are still one, two. We are still within two spaces of them. This is an, an entire space. So we are on this space, one, two. So we could still remove those light tokens. And again, we at least need six plus in order for something probably really bad to not happen. So let's roll our dice. Ah. All right, so not terrible. One thing we could do, one thing we could do is we could, I think we try to reroll this to get one of this, one of these values, place it on the plus one die slot. We are within two, so we could start rolling four dice next time, making it a little bit easier because we already know we have one symbol here and we have a wild. So if this doesn't come up with our symbol, we could just use the wild and it doesn't. So we'll store this, we'll use the wild. So we are gonna place a light token on the plus one dice slot. So we'll roll four dice next time. Uh, we are gonna get rid of, we are going to get rid of this card, which is then uh, and we're, we're going to place this card and we'll draw up and now we'll shuffle these forming a new draw deck. Okay. So we just went, these guys are going, oh, darkness card. Nobody's adjacent. Oh. Oof getting bad with these shadows man it's getting bad with these shadows um okay nobody's adjacent two scouts each move one west um let's just have this guy west and we'll have this guy west 
Uh, the westernmost scout moves to east. We already activated this guy, so we'll do him. One, two. The closest shadow moves two to engage. Oof. Oh, come on, dude. One virtue removes all dice from their reserve. One virtue discards their left hand action card. That's the one I needed. This game's driving me crazy. She's driving me crazy, man. Minus one clarity, minus one strength, or minus one compassion for each shadow in Solomon Kane's surroundings. There are none. So we don't have to worry about that. And place a blessing. Which is plus one strength, plus one clarity, or plus one compassion. Man, we're getting, dude, we're getting annihilated by these shadows. And then we got to spawn one at X. Of course, of course, right next to us. It's not looking good, guys. Raphael, what's up, man? Consensus was it was best solo. I can, I can see that, dude. And I think that's kind of why I'm, you know, like I, I, I have no interest and in, uh you know even my buddies playing this like because i got i got better games that i would rather play with them like in a, in a group uh with this i'm just fully content read the story be immersed in it you know just play how i want yeah okay now we are within the aura we are within two uh we have plus one dice and we have the plus one aura size so we are rolling four dice now all right we got two wilds and i do like these symbols because we we really want those for our Place one light token. Uh, the problem is now we are not within two of those guys. So that is a problem. Um, that is a problem. So we can't do the light token on there. So I think what we could do, maybe we just do this to move Solomon Kane. And then we also store these dice to go move her here. And then if she and then if we move her one more time to go here, now we'll be within one, two, one, two. So maybe we can do two more place in the light. That'll give us the six by the end. Those are just the locations where the shadows can spawn. So it says X, Y, X or sorry, X, Y, and Z. So on these darkness cards, at the end, this is the spawning section. So this would just say X. So if we are not at our shadow limit, uh, which is right now three, we would, if it told us to place a shadow, it would tell us where, and we would just spawn it there. All right, so I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're actually gonna use this. We're gonna flip it, which is gonna be the circle with the thorns. Um, and I think we're going to, yeah, man, I think we're just going to move Solomon Kane up one and we're going to store these. See, we really need to be next to the virtue and the other test game, dude, the virtue kept getting wiped out constantly because it was just the way that the cards were dictating the shadows to move. Like we were moving a lot from up here and here and where my virtue was. She just kept doing the shockwave and killing these before we even got this. Okay, so we did this. Um, we are going to place, we'll do this here. Uh, we'll draw up. And how many darkness cards do we have? We have five left, so I think we're good on darkness cards. All right, these guys move. We don't have much longer with them. All right. Uh, so now darkness card. Nobody's adjacent, so we're gonna go to the this one. The closest scout searches. So it looks like we have two equal distance. So we'll just say this guy. We'll just do this guy searches. Uh, he is two away, so he's gonna get a base of zero. We're not adjacent to a light token, so nothing else is added. Uh, we get three, so we already know what that is again, and that is the we, they don't find Solomon and we place a wild in here. So that helps. We just have to hope that this shadow doesn't come in and wipe our dice out. Uh, two scouts each move one north. Uh, so this guy can move north and this guy can move north. 
Okay, the closest shadow moves one to threaten. Okay, so there's a difference between engage and threaten. So if it even said moves two to threaten, even though he could move two to get into my spot, they want to threaten, not engage. So that's good. So he's going to come here. That's going to give us a negative on our modifiers. And all hunters move two and fight two, but there are no hunters right now. And we spawn one at X. Since we only have two on the board and we are at three, we're going to spawn one on X, of course, being right here again. Okay, so let's go. We're in the aura. We have three wilds, right? And we're rolling four dice. Got to make something happen this time. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, what I think we might do... I think we might... We might do this one, talk four or gain two of these white dice, which again could, they would go on the cloud here and we could use these for any value. Um, but that would give us a minus one on our compassion. Wait, did we take that? Oh no, we took down clarity. So instead of having a plus one, we'd be at a zero for four, five, and six. So if we go down to six, we wouldn't worry about it going down too much more you know, after that, because we'd still be at a zero for all these. Uh, but again, we don't want to get too low. Um, so we could also do this one, move two. I think that's maybe what we want to do. Or alternatively, I think we, we got to get her, we got to get her moving because they're, Ooh, ooh, are we? We would still be two away here. We gotta get her moving. So we have to do this at least once. We have to do this. We have to do this. So if that's the case, we could do all three. These are all three question marks. So they could be whatever uh, face. So we would we wanna at least move her up once here so then she can go to here. Once she's here, we'd be one, two, one, two, one, two. So she'd be good there for the rest of the game. Also, what we could do is we could maybe do this, move to ourself. So we could go here and then one, two, be right there. So then if a shadow comes in, shockwave time, we wouldn't be adjacent to any of these tokens. I kind of like that idea. And then while she's here, the problem is though, ooh. Yeah, the problem is going to be if she if we put our virtue here and the shadow comes into the spot, that wipes her out. I guess alternatively, we could take a danger and it essentially stops them. Yeah, that might be best. That might be best. I might have to look that up before it happens. Because we have two things. We could do a shockwave or we could take a danger and essentially just blocks them, their movement, so they wouldn't be able to come in. And I think we might do that because we don't want her to be taken off the board because then we'd have to spend three dice to get her back on the board. Now, the benefit to that is you can place her wherever you want to on the board as long as it's not in a spot with another immortal. Can Solomon Cain blast fools in the face or is it all about the virtues on an escort mission? Um, he can. There are fight things. Um, and we would have to go through, like, there's a fight deck and it's the same. It's like skill checks and stuff like that. Um, but for right now, we're just kind of creeping in the shadows. I think until these guys find us. Until these guys find us. Or I guess alternatively, we could just, and that would be the thing. It says, uh, uh, where is it? When Solomon Cain activates a fight or talk test, discard this card. So we could actually fight them right now. We could just be like, screw this, you know, shadows business. Like, here's my musket. You know, we could do something like that. We could do something like that. Um, but for now... Let's do this. So we did 
We are going to do this to move her one, which we just did. And we are going to do this to do a move two. One, two. We're right now in her spot. All right. So these guys are going to go. Um, sorry. First, are we going to remove any one of these? Oh, we already did this one. I think we're going to save. Should we save that one? Yeah, let's save that one. Let's save that one. It is. It is, Curtis. Yeah. It really is. Um, okay. So we did that. These guys are going to move. Yeah, the, uh, the last mission I did for Halloween, that was a fun one. That was a fun one. I did, I do thoroughly enjoy some of these, uh, some of these missions. It is, it is pretty cool. But the one continuing that other story, it seemed a little like, like I said, it probably wouldn't have been best for a stream. At least this way we're kind of like sneaking around this courtyard, right? We got to like, we're getting attacked a bunch. All right, gents, uh, and Tiffany, uh, if you're still around, I'm calling it a night. Good luck, Andrew. Night, everyone. All right, Steven, dude, thank you so much. Golden Chalice. I'll catch you on the Discord, brother. Thank you so much, dude. I will say, though, I'm, I'm happy you made it this long, Steven. Super cool of you, man. Snoring right next to me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. All right. So we just moved them. Uh, let's do the darkness card. All right. Um, we do have a scout adjacent. One scout searches. Okay. So they are adjacent to us. So they got a base value of one now. Uh, but we're not next to a light and we're not next to in a fog spot. So they get a plus two, which is three. And again, we know that's going to put them at, they don't find us and let's place a wild. Okay. What's the rest do? Two scouts each move one south. Uh, we already activated that guy. Let's take these guys down here. The closest southernmost scout moves to north. So nobody else can do that. The closest shadow moves to to engage. Okay. All right. So this guy would move to to engage. Now let me look. I'm just going to look this up real quick just to see. Um, the shadows. Where was it? And again, I believe... Okay, hold their ground. The shadow cannot move into the area. Return it to the last area it was in before the virtues. Its move ends. Danger increases by one. I think that's what we're going to do. So it's trying to come in here, but when we block it uh, and we go up, because we want her to... Wait, no. That wouldn't make any sense, right? Because if we need to move her, we need to pay three anyway. So if we're going to pay three to move her, we can just pay three to put her on a spot. No, so we're not going to do that. We took that back down. So this is going to enter the spot. She does a shock wave. She comes back to her little board. And these are dual layer boards. These are pretty nice. Um, except that they don't have the cutouts for these slots. Man, come on. They do have it for these uh, and the virtue, though. So this guy goes away. Okay, we'll do that. That's that's a little bit better. Uh, that's why. That's why you wouldn't do it. Sorry, I'm just realizing now why you wouldn't do it. Because now we wouldn't get the plus one die. Because she's not on the board. We wouldn't get the plus one die. Is that needed though we need to get two more right we need to get two more so what we could do we're gonna roll four dice now the other way we would roll three we'd have two wilds 
So we could fulfill this and move and place her. I'm just trying to think it out because if we take her off the board, we're going to roll three dice. We have two wilds that could do this. And we would roll another three and these are question marks. So if we then place her down, then do a place one light, we could take it from like this spot, place it on here. That would give us five. Now she's on the board. She's still within two. Yeah, why not? So let's do that instead of taking a danger, right? Yeah, I guess so. We'll just do that. Okay, let's roll three. Okay. Got some wilds here. This isn't going to matter, right? Because we still have to do this. Okay, so we're going to place her. She could go here. Let's have her go here just in case this shadow starts to come down here, right? At least we can, yeah, do that. So we're, th we're within two away. We already did this. Let's do this. Place one. We're going to remove it from here. Place it on here. We got five. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, we're not going to remove any of these. I don't think so. These guys are going to move. Where are you taking me, Sam? Find your woman there, Jack. Okay. All right, so darkness card. Uh, we are not, we are adjacent to a scout. One scout searches, so he's going to search. Again, we're not adjacent, but he has a plus one base. That is two. It does say here on the card, the left, which what these guys are using, uh, the most common result is a two. This These numbers are not very high. Solomon Kane for his checks, we would use these red numbers. These red numbers go up to like seven, I think maybe even eight or something like that. So they can really help out. Uh, so we already know what this does. It's going to put a die here. They don't find us. Um, we already did this from last time. There wasn't a spawn point on That was a previous card. I just forgot to put it up. Okay, then non-adjacent. Um, two scouts each move one north. We already activated that guy. Those guys can't. Uh, I guess this guy can move. No, that's not a scout. The easternmost scout moves one west. The closest shadow moves two to threaten. One, two. The farthest shadow moves three to threaten. Oh, no. All right, so here's where it would be. One, two. I guess we could say... No, this would be, this would be closer. This would be threatening, right? One, two, three, that wouldn't be. One, two, three, yeah, so it would move here. So again, we have another option here. I think now we have to keep that, we have to keep her on. So we're gonna spend one to basically block him, put him back there. And one does spawn on X. Okay, uh, back to our turn, we're rolling four, because we are within the aura. Oof. Um, okay, so at least we could fulfill this of placing the light, and we are within two, so we could get our six here. Right, we could do that. I don't think there's anything else we want to do. I don't think there's anything else we want to do. Uh, let's store these. That might actually be... Mm. Do 
do we want to add to the darkness deck? I don't think so. I think we just want to keep these for now. think we want to keep these alternatively we could also move her so we could like remove one then put her into this spot first or second yeah maybe we do that just in case yeah okay well let's let's do that so let's use this first we are within two of Jack and Sam, and we are going to place one. And again, when we place with the virtue, we can choose to remove it from one of these. And I guess we're just gonna do, I guess this one here, put it on here. We got six now. And then we're gonna use this to move her one. We're gonna go over to here. Yeah. And that's, uh. That's our turn. Okay, these guys are gonna go over to here. Okay. So they moved. This says, if there are no more uh, of those tokens on the board, uh, it's over. Uh, the chapter would end. So they have essentially lured Jack into the place and it says, if we have six plus, place two. I don't know why we would place. But we already have, we, so we have two. It says, proceed to 8F or 8A. 8F or 8A if 305 is in play. Oh, proceed to 8F or 8A if 305 is in play. Uh, we do not have 305 in play. 301, 7, 26, and 43. So we would proceed to 8F. Proceed to 8F. Okay, 8F. Okay. And I was thinking we could do, my plan was to do one of these stories and a scene. So we already did the scene. Okay. Okay, so it says 8F, from the shadow. Solomon Kane steals into the grounds of Sir George Banway's manor under the cover of dense fog. Ahead, a gruff voice penetrates the murk, so Kane follows closely. Silent as an owl on the wing by night, it was Jack Hollinster with Banway's Shirley henchman. The windy master uh, came from the man's hand. It was fierce. The Windy Master came from a man, Sam, in a fierce whisper. I'll have that glimpse doused, but he be there just the same. Together, the pair steal silently. Together, the pair steal silently to the great dark house. Cain finds time to wander at the silence and the lack of guards. Is Sir George so certain of himself that he had not taken the trouble to throw out sentries? Or are the sentries sleeping on duty? Jack tries a window cautiously. It is heavily shuttered, but the shutters swing open with a surprise ease. All is too sure, too easy. Can anticipates what will happen next, but isn't close enough to prevent it. He sees the bludgeon in Sam's hand, Sam's hand go up. Jack whirls, also realizing the danger, but too late. In that fleeting flash, Kane notes the evil triumph in the little swinish eyes. Sam is bundled inside and, and Kane picks up the pace, slipping unheard through the window after them. Okay. Okay. So, the scene is over. We have slipped into this house, right? And they, it seems like they just went out the window. <laughs> Bundled inside and Kane picks up the pace, slipping and heard through the window after them. Okay, so he lured this guy in here, right? And now we have to do this story part. So basically what this is, uh, we can move all these guys up. So the virtue is back on the board. We don't get the benefits of these, okay? 
But now we have to illuminate Solomon Cain's path. And this is what I was talking about. And we also have to draw four darkness cards. So we have to illuminate. Uh, usually it's like, I think, th yeah, three is bright. So if bright, proceed to 9C. Dark, proceed to 9D. Hammer time. Yeah. So we, uh, we have to illuminate the path. So we have to at least get three of these uh, illuminated. Three of these illuminated. So shuffle this. So we got special rules. Plus two clarity. One, two, okay. All virtues may play a card from their discard pile. Place a light token on Solomon Cain's path equal to the current clarity modifier. So it looks like clarity is plus one. So we get to add plus one to this path. Okay. Oh, these aren't all the darkness cards. What am I doing? I was like, it feels a little light. It's only the same 10. There we go. Got to get the rest of them. So I will say the, the last, the scene that we just played, um, if we were to be discovered, I did look it up. All the guys would then try to start fighting us. So if they found us, we're like, we're exposed, uh, has to shine bright, like a <laughs> shine bright, like a diamond. We would, uh, we would have to fight those guys. So they would actually change uh, from searching to like attacking. And they would try to, you know, come at us and stuff like that. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Freddy. Yeah, man. Oh, that's funny. That's so funny. Okay, so I think this is good. We got to draw four cards. All right. And all virtues may play a card from their discard pile. So uh, we got to draw four. One, two, three, four. Okay, those are four. Okay. Now I guess I think these go away. I probably just jacked it all up, but that's that's how we're gonna do it. I think these go away, and I think it just means, yeah, all virtues may play a card from the discard pile. Yeah. So I'm assuming that just means, like from now on, that we can play a card from our discard pile every turn. I don't know what else that would mean. One, two, three, four. And we're looking for the place the light tokens and add remove darkness cards. So we only have four darkness cards in there, so that would help. And so we do have the two cards we're kind of looking for right now. Add one darkness card and place a light token. So we're, we're going to do this. All right. Um. And these two were with these two are in our hand, and these two we're gonna shuffle. Yeah, and Curtis, this is a this is a real game that I've I've played this a bunch already, and it's like I know the last time I played was Halloween, so it was kind of a little while ago. And usually with me anyway, I need to get a refresher of the rules. I understand the core mechanics of like the cards and stuff like that, but a lot of times it keeps coming down to, okay, what is the, you know, how do I do the fight skill checks? And, you know, you know, I have to, it's a, it's one of those that you kind of each scenario that you dive into, you're going to have to get a refresher of it. Um, there, there can be a lot, there can be a lot. And it's, that's what I'm saying, especially then with the errata on the cards, when you're trying to remember all this stuff again, and now you got to be like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Wait, what is this? Oh, crap. Okay, let's look this up. And then you got to do that like 10, 15 times, you know, and then realize, oh, this card is actually completely different or something. That's where it starts to get a little frustrating. More of a narrative. Yeah, it, it kind of is. It, you're, these stories are from Robert E. Howard. So you're kind of playing through the stories. Um, now I think some of the books I don't I don't think all of the books are directly from his work. I think some are like added, 
but I think most of them are. So it's it's supposed to be that that narrative feel. Yeah. But I like what it's doing. Again, I love those games that have the discovery cards all throughout the game, right? And then you also have the event cards, or not the event cards, the if we were to do the battles, um, what would happen is we would also do a check. So then it says it has a little bit of story text on here. So it would say if we got maybe seven, a result of seven. Kane skillfully lunges at an enemy, piercing his stomach before sidestepping and poising himself for the next attack. And then it also has two values here. So then we would look up, okay, it says E024 and E033. We would then have to go to a fight effect deck. So we were looking at E024. And we would resolve that. So that would say, okay, if target is Solomon Kane, it's not. Otherwise, place a wound on that. So then we would take a wound marker, place it on that enemy. And all enemies have a base value health of one unless stated otherwise. So we could potentially maybe now just take out this guy, right? Or we could continue to battle. And then it said also resolve E003, move one. So then we can move one, right? It's 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 pretty thematic in that sense, but it's, it's that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, um, let, we're fighting. We played a fight card. We got fight plus four. So we got four fight as our base value. We have all three of these illuminated. We have seven plus we have one to our strength plus one. So now we're at eight. Uh, we draw a card, we get a plus four, so we're now we're at 12. So now we look at this, we're at eight plus. Kane deftly repasse, repasse and, and attack before unleashing a fury of blows. Now look up these fight cards. So that can, it can get a little, like it didn't, I don't want to say it can come to a crawl because you're going you're gonna to have to get faster and faster at it. So obviously the more plays. But if you're just getting into that stuff, that can be a lot, dude. It can be a lot. And it doesn't help with the mythic rule book. You know, and plus with errata. That's where it can start to get like it's it can kind of get to be like, oh man, what what's going on here? Hell will be a lot like this. It, yeah, it might be. It might be. But honestly, dude, like if you can get past that stuff, right? And you're just you're reading the story, you got the story all throughout right you're you're you start to develop an understanding of what's going on it, it and it starts to flow smooth it, it can be fun i do really enjoy this card play you know being able to cycle this deck there's only eight cards and you got these dice and stuff like that you can do the reserve you got to find the symbols i like that stuff i think this is a lot of fun super stoked for hell yeah dude yeah me too i went all in i actually got two copies of that game and I was going to sell one later, but then I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's cancel. I prefer narrative campaign games over one shots most of the time. Okay. Yeah. And dude, this is, this is a, this takes a while to set up. This takes a while to set up. It's not a crazy amount of table space. But, and we'll take a look at the boxes afterwards, but the boxes are huge, man. Huge. All right, so let's let's get this cracking. So we got our stuff out. We only have four darkness cards that we can do, and now we're not going to resolve the with the stuff with the scouts moving and stuff. We're only going to resolve the tops of these cards, and sometimes that can be like, okay, remove a light from Solomon Kane's path. All right, so let's get going. We can only roll three dice now because our virtue is not on the board, so we can no longer take the benefits of these. Okay, so we could. We know this is a circle. We know on the back of this is the circle with the thorns, right? And that is what we're looking for for this one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this to the opposite side. Um, we flipped, so we can't re-roll this. So we're going to store this, and we're going to place a light token all right darkness uh do we want to get rid of anything no i do like this symbol though we can add a darkness card if we need to if we need to all right all virtues discard their right hand action card that kind of sucks but at least at least we have that all right and that was it for that card back to us 
Okay, two wilds. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. So do we want to add a darkness card? I don't think so. Maybe we just keep this here just in case. I mean, I guess we'll just keep on doing this, right? We don't need to do anything else. And we can store this now. So we, now we place a light token. All right, let's do the... Uh, now we can place a card here. We don't need to worry about fighting. But just to start cycling these out, we'll place that card. Okay? Uh, plus one danger. That's it. Back to us. And the bad thing about this is, like, this is a continuous story. So this is going to be like this for the next scene. So we don't want this to get too high, right? So we're going to have to manage all of these stats throughout. All right, so we got, got some pretty good ones here as well. Uh, but the cool thing is, after you do this, depending on how many you have illuminated, like, say we have three, if this stays three when this ends we can modify one of these stats. If we have four, we can modify two, and five, we can do three. So I think we also keep this here. Let's re-roll this. All right, so let's store it. And I don't think we're gonna add to the darkness deck. We only have two more, but I think we might be all right. I think we might be all right. Plus one danger, ooh, that puts us at eight. Ooh, that's a little scary. Uh, and we did want to get rid of this one last time to keep cycling this. Oh, dude, if it didn't fall off the book, it was going to be a wild. <laughs> if it didn't fall off the book, that sucks. Okay, but I guess we can place one more. And after this, uh, that would be it. Right? Unless we want to add one more darkness card, and I don't think we need to, because even if this says to remove a light token, we're still at four. We're still at four, and our path would still be bright. Um, so if this is the case, I guess let's just re-roll. Okay, so this actually matched. Uh, we can't store this anyway, so whatever. Uh, so we place one more, and let's see. Minus one strength. Okay, so that is over. We have illuminated the path. Uh, we are bright, so we get to modify three stats. Obviously, we'd come down in this one, right? Uh, we're still at plus ones for these, so maybe I do two and then three, something like that. And then it says, if bright, proceed to 9C. And then we'll read this story and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit um, about the game and stuff. Nine C, man, two hours. Oof. It's almost it's almost asking if, to do another scene, but I don't think so. All right, nine C. Okay. So it says, away from the main hall, Kane enters the secluded western wing of the manor, with a long corridor running down the center of it. This wing consists of servants' quarters, storerooms, and a kitchen. The carpet is particularly worn and threadbare here, as the floor has been trodden by many more feet than elsewhere in the manor. Kane's eyes narrow as he scans the surroundings. At the far end, there is a door, which appears to be the type to lead to a cellar. But no other portal lines the corridor. This is indeed suspicious in old houses like this one, particularly ones associated with a history of smuggling and intrigue. There would likely be secret doors and passages. Knowing the, that Banway and Hardraker could conclude their business at any point and be away, he begins his search, taking all due care, for he knows that hand in hand with, sec for he knows that hand in hand with secret mechanisms go traps. Okay. So now it looks like it says concealed ways. So we'd have to set up, right? And then now we'd have to find a secret door in this manner. We'd have to find a secret door. And that's uh that's where we'll we'll conclude uh, for this. I generally like to with the playthrough. Uh, I did it last time and it seemed to work out. 
with just doing a scene and a story, which is what we just did. So yeah. Okay. So we have followed, we had followed this guy and we're hoping that we're not too late. We're hoping that we're not too late. Uh, but what's cool is anything on this cloud stays from uh, you know, chapter to chapter. So we could potentially use these in the future to really help us out. Uh, let's see. Longest setup I've ever had for any game is the first edition of Mansions of Madness. Ooh, it is mind numbing. Yeah, the app, the app is amazing for that though as well. Yeah, horror stories for the first edition. Yeah, I, I got the second edition. Not the first. Got mentions uh, on my Xmas list, maybe for Father's Day. There you go, Nate. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Yeah, and I'm with I'm with Curtis, man. Um, oh, you. So you're saying the second edition is much better? I did enjoy. I did enjoy it. Um, I think me and my wife we played it the last time. It was a good experience. We also played that uh, for the Halloween. We did a. Uh, if if anybody doesn't know. We actually did like a week of games. So we did like uh, Horrified. We did Mansions of Madness Second Edition. We did I did Solomon Kane playthrough. I forget what else I did. did I do. I forget what else I did. Um, was it Cthulhu Death May Die? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we it took us a lot longer than I expected it to. It took us like six plus hours. It wasn't a live stream, uh, but it just we went to like. I think it was like 2.33 in the morning or something like that. And by the end of it, it was just like, oh, just end this now. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, but I think just that length, that just that last time we played, it just kind of like, oh. But the app is, the app is incredible, man. The app really puts you into the theme of it, for sure. Yeah, and I was uh, I was gonna try to get some of. Oh, let me show you the boxes. Let me show you the boxes of these. So this is, and they're they're heavy too, man. So like, this is one of the boxes. It's absolutely massive. You can see on there on the top. Uh, it comes with you know it's got all the books and stuff like that. There's a lot of story card dividers. And then there's like tokens underneath here where you can store all that stuff. The, the storage isn't terrible. It isn't terrible. It's pretty good for this box. But it this is absolutely heavy and absolutely massive. And equally as big, it's, it's almost the exact same size, is another box just for the minis. And there are some additional tiles in there. So for right now, I still have all the minis in the boxes. Uh, but you know, there's like a bunch of different boxes, right? Just for the minis. It can get kind of annoying, you know? So when you're trying, when the chapter says, okay, you need this, these minis. Okay, well now, hell, I gotta go through the, are they in this box? Uh, they're not, right? All right, let's close this up. All right, are they in this box, right? And you gotta go through this, right? You can kind of roll out these three because these are like specialty things. I think there's like horses, like guys riding horses for death, Death's Black Riders in here. These are the virtues in here and I believe some other big villains like the ogre and stuff like that, a wolf. And I forgot what's in here, but there's just, is that the core box? Yeah, yeah. So the minis are in one, the story cards and tokens are in another. That's the core. That is the core box. Two core boxes. Bigger than, uh, I'd say they're, they're bigger than the, the barman, Gotham City Chronicles. <laughs> Watch Batman again, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, I was thinking about maybe doing, because I got a lot of new stuff in. Still pretty, eh, it's 11. I got a lot of decent stuff in. I mean, I even got the... Uh, automaton of shale in so i was thinking about maybe cracking this open i don't know if i want to like record this stuff but this thing is sweet look it's bigger than i thought it was gonna be like it's got this whole nice box that flips open as well 
All right, that's pretty cool. Book is decent size. Pretty excited about this one. Decent size book. Got some uh, game components down there. So I'm pretty excited about that. I got, I got all the deep madness over here. I guess not all of it. Core box is over there. Which one is the expansion? I got deep madness stuff. I'm rocking out to. Counted horrors. We got the uh, that one. We got endless nightmares. I got Bloodborne over there. Mm. A lot of stuff to get to, man. A lot of stuff to get to. Get mine with Unbreakable. Nice, Raphael. Yeah, man. Dude, it looks. I flipped open the first page just to see what you know what it would look like. Good stuff, dude. Really good stuff. Let's see. Uh, is that the core box? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you finished early enough? To, yeah. God, the all-in must be massive. Yeah, dude. If you if you go online, dude, there's... Uh, that was, I believe, wave one. It even came with another box. Um, smaller, but also came with the right hand of doom. Came with this, this is a little smaller box. But I think that was wave one. And wave two... I believe came with five additional large size, not that large, but you know, like a full game box size of expansion material. I think at least three of those boxes. There's a lot of stuff for this game, a lot. Um, posted on each box to list what minis are. That's a good idea, Tim. I did not think about that. I did not think about that. Yeah, or even if I was going to keep it, yeah, at least maybe even just a Sharpie, like, with real small, you know, something like that. That's not bad. But, oh, yeah, but I guess I guess a post-it note would be better because then you could write with, like, a pen a little bit smaller. Yeah, that is a great idea, Tim. Yeah, you're right. Uncounted Horrors is Stretch Goals box? Okay, okay. That is the only TMB stuff I passed on, really. Yeah, Mike, it, it looked cool to me, and, I mean, plus I already have, like, I don't have everything else. I don't have like the log books or anything like that, but um, you know, so, but I want it all gameplay stuff. Anything that's going to add to the, you know, physical components that I can use in the game. Uh, that's what I wanted. So there are some like chips in there and stuff like that. Some cards uh, that you can incorporate. Yeah, Tim said, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, what else? Did anything else come in? Massive Darkness 2 Stretch Goals box came in as well. A lot of stuff came in this week. A lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm debating. I'm debating on what I'm going to play. So next week, uh, I am on vacation. So I don't think there's going to be any sort of videos. What I was thinking of... You know, what I might do, I might record opening Deep Madness. I might do an unboxing. At least record it. I don't know if I'm going to put it out. Uh, maybe. But any purchases on uh, Miniature Market today? No. No, I hopped on um, after I started hearing about some of the deals. And I was, I added some stuff to my cart. Uh, I went to check on the Lightbringer box sold out i was gonna add some uh, army painter speed paints or whatever it was i ended up not doing it i think they were like 32 bucks so it seemed like a good deal and there were some other things that i that i thought i was like hey i could do that memoir 44 maybe i'll pick up that you know and some other games but ultimately i was like dude i just picked up a bunch i already have a bunch if the day comes where i'm like you know what i'm satisfied let's get a new game Hey, let's see if Memoir 44 is in. Maybe then I'll get it. I don't want to get it right now just because it might be like $10, $15 off. So I, I passed. I passed today. How was this two hours in Dark Tower 5? <laughs> I think it was because if if they didn't have this, this mechanic forced it, man. Because they, after every one of my turns, boom, 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 boom. They just moved around. I don't know, dude. Plus, I know this game a little bit better. I know this game a little bit better. 
that could be a reason. That could be a reason. But uh, yeah, five hours is, is a lot. And I think it was, I spent a lot longer with the rules explanation at the beginning of Return to Dark Tower. Um, because I think I was also like saying it again for myself while I was on the stream. Because usually what happens is I'll like, I'll have the rules down packed and I'll be like, okay, I stop. I kind of put stuff away. I take it down here to start setting up. And then I spend some time with the family and stuff like that. So in that time, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to have memory problems when I get older, but like I, I tend to forget some things because it's like, it can be overload sometimes. So maybe sometimes I talk out the rules to refresh myself. Maybe that's why, but plus I had app issues, man. You know what it is. You know, like the, the, uh, the computer, maybe that was it. I don't know, man. But what I was going to say about the, the streams is that, so next week I'm on vacation. I was initially going to do a stream, maybe Monday or Tuesday, but I think I'm just going to be like, okay, let's just reset it. I'm just tired. Like I'm, I'm just physically tired. Um, so maybe let's just reset, maybe do an unboxing, take my time, right? I got a few days before I actually leave to go to the place. And then so when we come back, my wife promised, okay, and I'm going to put it back on the schedule. So we'll see. Third time's a charm, promising Super Fantasy Brawl. She said she would, okay? And I think it's going to be Monday. It's either going to be Monday or Tuesday, but I'm going to push for Monday. So we're going to play Super Fantasy Brawl on Monday. I think Tuesday is either going to be Automaton of Shale. Not Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be Automaton of Shale or... Zaya. I've been talking about playing Zaya again. I love Zaya. Absolutely love it. And then Friday, that Friday, is either going to be Bloodborne or Deep Madness. So I'll put out a poll on the Discord for you guys to uh, to vote on that. And then whichever game I don't get to, I'll just play the following week. That'll be the plan. That'll be the plan. I almost bought that today. Uh, it was only 36 bucks. Uh, which one, Mike? Oh, super, oh, super fantasy brawl. Yeah, dude, that was a that was a great deal. I don't know how many uh, brawlers come inside of that. Cause I have the I have the big box. Of course, I have the big. This is a ginormous box as well. Uh, the big box from here, and I don't. I don't know how much come in that retail edition. I just know there's a bunch of like. I know we're getting off track here, but it's fine. So there's like, I don't know if there's like six brawlers that come in here, but I think there's 12 that come in here. Because there's like another, there's like another three under here and then another three under here. But it's cool, man. I got the, uh, I got the statues painted at least. Got the statues painted. That that counts for something, right? Look, look at your boy. Look at this. There's some stone statues. They're not too bad. Let me put on the uh, the zoom. I might have to do like a Q and A session, just like just shooting the shit. <clears throat> I got the statues. Statues look good. Oh man, focus. Focus, man. There you go. Hey. The statue. Got this guy. This guy's cool. This guy's my favorite statue. Yeah. Yeah, so I got these guys painted. Where's the other one? Oh, it's under here. This is a simple game as well. Yeah, not too shabby. I don't have any of the brawlers painted. They they look they're gonna take some time, man. Like they, they take they're like very detailed. These are I love these minis, man. They're so big. They're so big. And they're just like thick. They're just like like you just don't feel like you're ever gonna break these. Come on, man. Dude. Yeah, minis are minis are solid. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, let's see. 
Totally fair. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. Like a little bit of a little bit of reset. I think it should be good. Jeez. I'll get it eventually. I may not be smart man, Jenny. There you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know there was three in each uh, twenty dollar expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. Yep, yep. Like a Peterson cams, Peterson games mini. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. That's exactly Curtis. Yep. There. It feels like that. Yeah. Just real solid. Yep. Exactly like that, dude. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Only thing is, I absolutely hate these trays. They're garbaggio. Just the lids just pop off like crazy, and it's just a huge box. Huge box. Of course, got to have that errata sheet. <laughs> got to have that errata sheet. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, I even have... So in addition to the round two, well, that mini just got pummeled. Yeah, so the, at, at this point, I got like three additional expansions for it. Like this this came with the first, the force of nature. And then there's three other expansions that came in round two. So yeah, we'll get that going. Are you going to shave your beard on vacation? Why would I do that, Dan? Come on. Come on with a better comment, bro. Uh, you should take your paints on vacation. <laughs> so here's here's the funny thing, right? I'm just kidding, by the way, Dan. No, but I'm not. I'm not going to shave it. Um, here's the thing about that, though. I was thinking about, at least for one of the new games, right? And why I want to do maybe Zaya Super Fantasy Brawl when I just get back. I want to take some time off from like learning a game, right? So I only I only want to do one new, new game to me, right? Or new game, Bloodborne or Deep Madness. I don't want to do them both that week. So I was going to take one of the manuals of whichever I was playing, but I can totally see my wife just really giving me a hard time. Like, are you seriously reading a rule book right now on vacation? Because I'm like always reading rule books or having a game on the kitchen table upstairs or something, dude. So I can totally see her like pulling me aside before we go and just be like, all right, babe, like, I want you to just take this week and just not even think about board games, <laughs> which is impossible, dude. <laughs> but I might, I might just like, you know, while she's sleeping, just like hit the nightlight and just like open up the rule book while we're sleeping. Um, press the minis. Yeah, they're, they're nice. They are nice Tim. <laughs> Take your pants. <laughs> Leave the pants at home. It's a real vacation now, man. Oh. Oh, that just reminded me of uh the wedding venue we went to, me and my boys, with the whole pants thing. I won't I won't talk about it. We like there was this there was this lake. I just said I wouldn't talk about it. But there was this lake there. And we just started, we weren't supposed to go anywhere like near this, this pond or this lake. And just in my full rented outfit, I know I took, I took it off and we just, we just jumped straight into this thing and just got out, just put all these, all these clothes back on. I was just completely trashed and I just, I put all these clothes on. I was completely drenched and like you just walked by and you saw like the venue, the people that took care of the venue. And they were just like staring at us, but it was already like that. We were already wrapping up. So I was like, eh, nobody cared. Mental health will appreciate it. Yeah, Tim, that's the, uh, that's the plan. That is the plan. I've been detained at the local watering hole. I thought this was a Solomon Cain stream. <laughs> What's funny is it looks like the viewership kind of uh, jumped when we stopped playing. <laughs> You missed it, Dan. Yeah. Wait, did... Yeah, Dan, we're done. We're done. Oh, shit. 
Yeah, we're done, Dan. We're done with that. Oh, no. All right, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, though. I am looking forward to it. Get a little bit of sleep again. Come back, hit it strong. Three days. Stream for three days. Get some really good games in. Zaya. Um, I think I am going to do Zaya when I come back. I said I was going to do uh, Automatana Shale, but I think I'm going to do Zaya. It would be bad for my mental health. I th I'll still have access to my phone, so I could still purchase stuff, Mike. <laughs> I could still purchase some games. <laughs> we'll do the Steven method. How do you save money on board games? Well, you do that by going all in. <laughs> there you go, Curtis. Yeah, Curtis, you can paint. You can paint pretty well, man. That is the truth. A lot of these guys can. Um, I know a lot of these guys post pictures, and uh, they lo they all look pretty good. Dan can paint well. Jason can paint pretty good. Uh, Steven as well. I don't know. I don't know if uh, Nate or uh, Freddie have ever submitted. I think Freddie has as well of uh, minis that they've painted. I'm not sure. I'm forgetting. I just I just know Curtis and Dan because they they seem to post uh, more pictures of their minis. Did order speed paints? Uh, we will see how speedy. They, yeah, exactly, dude. All in on a madness. Uh, now, Curtis, is is the system the same? Is the system the same uh, as in Deep Madness? Raphael, the AD never uh, leaves us. The addiction? Is that what you mean? The addiction never leaves us? Yeah. Good thing I don't depend on you to learn how to play games. That's good, Dan. That's good. Yeah, man. Yeah, Freddy painted the Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. He did. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Yep, yep. The Discord dismantles any uh, gains in mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and for anybody else watching, uh, guys, like if uh, we have a great group, a lot of these guys talking now, um, they're in the Discord. Dude, it's a lot of fun in there. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, and I think uh, what I came up with, with was for the Discord, I'm going to have some uh, initial play thoughts. So what I was thinking is like, I test out a lot of these games prior to the streams. So what I was thinking is what I could do is maybe just have the phone just recording through, you know, just giving my initial thoughts, maybe like a five minute thing and just post that on the uh, the Patreon page. One thing I also want to do is um, that I already told these guys, I can draw fairly well, not as good as Nate, but I can draw pretty good. I need to be looking at stuff. So like if anybody at the Brewmaster or higher, uh, you guys can pick from whatever game. It doesn't matter, but I was thinking of keeping it within board games. Pick a game. Uh, and then, so, so like maybe Steven can pick, you know, a guy from Ruination or something like that. And, you know, uh, Nate can pick a guy from Conan, you know, something like that. Dan can pick, you know, who would Dan pick? Maybe somebody from Quacks of Quedlinburg or something like that, you know, whatever floats Dan's boat, you know, whatever. And then I could do like a mashup drawing. I think that would be super cool, you know, just, and then do that once a month. So in addition to like, you know, voting on the videos and stuff like that, talking on the discord, it's really become like a family in there. I, I honestly, I love it, man. I love it. Absolutely love it. So if, if you guys ever want to partake in that and join in that, uh, support the channel. Um, I do have a one-time PayPal donation thing and I do have a Patreon link in the, in the description below. Give it a shot if you're on the fence, man, you know, and just see what it's all about. You know, it, I think it could be. You might be surprised, man. Um, it's it's super busy all the time. We have a great time. A lot of these guys are hilarious. A lot funnier than funnier than I am. Uh, but yeah, so if you're curious about it, check it out. You might uh you might have a really good time. We bash on Mage Night all the time. It's it's a good time. 
let's see, uh, different system. Yeah, and that's what I saw, Curtis. So that was that was kind of the thing. I don't know. What do you think about that? About the different system? Uh, it's almost like a hybrid of ether fields and deep mattis. Ooh. I passed on ether fields after hearing all about the. Uh, was it that one section in the game where it's it kind of like takes you out of the game a little bit and it feels more like a chore playing than, you know, actually in the game, if that makes any sense. But I think they since changed that, right? They came out with some errata or something like that. Acquisition disorder. Yeah, yeah. Raphael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never leaves, man. It's there full time. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. I know. I'll still have access to the phone. With the saved uh, credit card. <laughs> yeah. Mage Knight, Dan will pick up. Uh, Dan will pick Mage Knight. Oh, yeah, that's right. He would. God damn it. Well, if that's the case, I just got to draw some stick figures for Mage Knight, right? It's about the same art style. <laughs> uh, we have seen your painting, bro. You're pretty damn good. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Thank you. I got some pretty good uh, drawing skills. My drawing skills are a little bit better than the painting skills. Might be a little rusty, though. Uh, Nate is Conan of drawing. Dude, Freddy, you couldn't have said it better. He's a warrior of lead and ink, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Freddy really knows how to say it, doesn't he? Talk about saving money by buying all in stuff like that, yeah. Funnier than I am is not a very high bar. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Dawn is going to be uh, super narrative driven like Solomon and you kind of jump from dream to dream and memory to memory through the characters storylines look super interesting. That's pretty cool, man. That is pretty cool. Ugh, don't do this to me, Curtis. Don't do this to me, man. Come on. How much is the all in? How much how much is the is the core? I might just go for the core. I'm trying to be more of a core guy. I'm trying to be more of a core guy. I don't think I need the complete all-ins for everything. We'll see how much the core game is. But what's this? What's the status with it as well? Right? Is it a uh, heavily make your second uh, job feel less like work, Andrew? I enjoy this stuff, man. I really enjoy this stuff. It, it is fun. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not burnt out from doing this at all in the slightest. Uh, it's it's really only my mental, uh, not not mental, my me being actually tired. That's all it is. That's all it is. I love doing this kind of stuff. Like I could just I could just sit here and talk with the stream forever, dude. I could just I could just talk with you guys. Uh, Cause you guys are so cool, and it's just so easy, you know. We just shoot the shit. Three thirteen, all in. Metal. To oh yeah, there's metal tokens. Yeah, yeah those are. Those were nice, dude. Um. Those were really nice. How much for the core, though? How much for the core? Because from what you were saying on the uh, Discord, there's a lot of minis involved, right? So like I think I'm I think I'm be good with the core man. I got so much other stuff to get to man, so many other things. Oh and speaking like I got I got I think I got 18 projects. Um, Raphael was cool enough. Me and Raphael are working together. We're gonna get um, he's gonna send me his copy of street masters we're gonna get that played speaking of Raphael, i gotta i gotta handle that i'm gonna try to do that tomorrow so i'm gonna Raphael's gonna send me his copy to to test and stuff like that uh we're gonna play some street masters on the stream i'm really excited about that uh so that should be a really good time there's just so much there's so much stuff to get to man there's so much stuff i think i gotta stop getting these all ins i think i have to stop at least reduce it, right? Save it for the games I'm really like. I really, really want. Um, let's see. 
would I be able to look it up? I think it's uh, 139 for the core. Okay. All right, and then what? Add shipping. What are we talking like? 30 for shipping? 40? Maybe 40? With that kind of price? Don't we really, really want all, all them? I'm not understanding. Yeah. Oh, we do, man, but we're trying to be realistic. Street Masters, I knew. I was waiting for Freddy. Yeah, Freddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think you'd have some sort of idea, Dan. I don't think you'd have to play with every single character to understand if you like the game or not. I'm also trying to mentally, because you guys saw the, maybe most of you saw the room tour. I got a decent amount of games, right? Out of all of those games, I'm still picking four boxes. Jesus, man. I'm still picking like the same games to get off of the shelf, right? I'm not playing too much, too many games that are like off camera. I think the first time I did that in a while was the other weekend when I, I told you guys I played a game of Uprising and a game of uh, Raiders of the North Sea. And those are the first two games I played in a while off camera, just kind of like just by myself, just in, uh, you know, playing the games. So while trying to get new games for the stream and stuff like that, while also picking games that I generally like over the other ones, I'm still picking like the same games. Excuse me. So with that being said, what's the likelihood that I get to all of that content for every game, right? We are talking Dawn of Madness, uh, Jason. What's up, man? I have my favorites. Yeah, exactly, Mike. So even if you look at a game and you're like, ooh, I, I do like that one, but I want to play this one, Right? I want to play, I'd rather play this one right now. For whatever reason that is, because you can't scratch that itch, it's an easier setup, you just like what it's doing slightly more, right? But it's like, ton of content from just the core. Yeah, and especially if it's what Curtis is talking about with four boxes, dude, that is so much stuff. That is so much. <laughs> There's Dan. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's like... It should last about an hour, Dan. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's that's just the thing. So I'm trying to I'm trying to be a little bit smarter. I'm trying to be a little bit smarter in that aspect. Of course, there's still going to be games that I'm going to get just a ton of stuff for. An unreasonable amount for, right? Like, I've had Nemesis for a while. I've still played a lot of Nemesis. I still haven't even played everything in Nemesis. Right? Lost money. Okay, totally nerded. <laughs> yeah. I highly doubt all my MT2 boxes will even get open. Yeah, I mean it's look, I think there's I think there's gonna be some games you can you can look at the games. If you really like it, you're gonna have the game for the rest of your life, right? So if you have the game for the rest of your life, you can assume that hey. I might not open up some of those boxes for maybe even a few years because I'm also cycling in different games. You got to really think about how many games do you actually play a week, right? You got 52 weeks in a year, right? If you play one game a week, you're playing 52 games a year. If you play one game a week and how many of those games are you playing this? Like, are you playing the same you know, games over and over again. So you got that one that's sitting off your shelf. Let's say you play a game, I don't know, even if you play a game 10 times in a year. I mean, I, I don't know how people, I don't know how many games people play. But from the way that I've been doing it with the streams, games got to be cycled in, right? So I might not get to Conan for another two months, right? So if I take, if I if I play it like that much, how long is it going to take me to actually explore all that content that I just got for the game, right? So if you take a look at it like, okay, yes, I understand that, but I'm going to have that for years. So eventually I'm going to play all of that stuff, 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine. You're going to have some games like that, but other things, other games, I'm like, dude, I have all this stuff. I'm just not going to get around to it. I'm just not going to get around to it. So with those cases, I got to be smarter and be like, you know, with the games that I usually cycle, the same 20 games that I really want to play over and over again, with that one being an outlier, I don't need that much for, right? Uh, let's see. Set up and tear down uh, time is a big factor. It is a huge factor. Yep, it is a huge factor. And that's why for some games, not all, like with Nemesis, I want to preserve the minis, even though they're unpainted right now. Some games I just want to keep fully preserved. Not on Steven uh, level, but preserved more than others. Nemesis is one. For others, though, I just kind of like for um, Lords of Hellas, the minis are pretty solid in there. So I kind of put them all in plastic baggies just to make setup time a lot faster. Um, I'm with you, man. Need to get off the all-in mindset and start going for core pledges more. Yeah, and dude, it's it's so easy to get sucked in though, man, right? Because it's like, if you take a look at the core pledge, oh, but this one pledge higher that gives you 50 more minis is only 30 bucks more, right? And then so you add that 30 and now you're you're adding more money. But then you're like, yeah, but now I'm only 40 from the even, from the all, all in pledge. So let's just add 40. But all of a sudden... Now you've just spent $100 more. You have so much more content that you haven't played. So you really got to you gotta have a lot of willpower to just be like, look, I know I'm going to miss out on all that stuff, but I got 100 other games with 20 more on the way that I'm going to be able to play. So like, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Mr. Beard, how much uh, do I have to behave when your wife is playing with shame? Not at all, dude. Not at all. Uh, I need some... Uh, guardrails assume i'm an idiot uh like you usually do uh yeah there's only the one thing there's only the one thing that i i told curtis uh, i'll just remind you but past that it's uh anything is game she'll shoot the shit with you man she she likes to rag on me too uh and i i like to get on her case she's she's probably she might be more sarcastic than you dan she might be more sarcastic than you. It's possible. It's close. It is close. So you, she'll, she'll laugh at your stuff uh, like crazy. Uh, she'll love it. She'll love you guys. I played Zombicide Second Edition twenty five times so far. See, Fred, that's a lot, Freddy. And I haven't even played through half of the survivors. That's what I'm talking about. See, and Freddy twenty five is a lot, dude. That is a lot. Play three to five a week. That is a lot, Mike. That is a lot. But I do play uh, some a lot more than others. Like I'm <laughs> like Dan. Play Burn Cycle, for example. I mostly buy games. Then uh, remember, I need to play other games while making new purchases. That's the that's the routine, dude. That is the routine. But that's why in the Discord, dude, I was gonna try to maybe start some sort of like, okay, we needed to do some sort of support group, okay. Uh, you need to bust out a game. And Nate, I really think you should get out Barman the Animated Series. Give it a shot, dude. Pop open the box, read the rules, watch the playthrough. I don't think I did that Barman Animated Series playthrough. I feel really good about those rules. So you can watch that playthrough with confidence of knowing how to play. Uh, but yeah, bust that open, dude. I think part of my problem is that the uh, I rationalize it by saying I can just sell the extra content if I decide I don't need the extra stuff. FOMO is real. FOMO is absolutely real. Yeah, and that's one of those things. The problem that I also have, Jason, with that mindset is that I get the game, I'll play it, I'll like, I'll like it enough to be like, yeah, that'll stay, right? It, it seems like it doesn't take much to please me. So the game will stay, and then now that I liked the core game of what that was doing, Everything else has to stay too, right? So now you're just taking up more space and you're still not getting around to the stuff, right? Uh, Havana's, what's up, man? I don't know what to do with all Marvel Zombies. Got the second highest pledge, but I keep looking at my pledge manager and want to get the Devourer pledge. Uh, Bowl Shipping and Handling, see, that's, yeah. $370 more, yeah, man. 
yeah, it's one of those things, right? That's the FOMO getting you. That's the FOMO. I don't know what's going to come to retail with Marvel Zombies. I don't know. But again, dude, you can look at that core game. Look, I mean, how, how different do you need the core game to be every single time? If you even have the same characters that you're playing with, right? You can play that game a number of times, even with the same characters, having a completely different experience. Maybe you play with six heroes at a time. Maybe you play with four another time. Maybe you play with another person. Already you're having a drastically different experience, still playing with the same amount of content. So in some cases, you just got to think like, maybe stop that mindset of like, yeah, but I'm going to play with the same characters and then I'm going to want more after like three sessions. Even if that's the case and you do want more, maybe just pick up one expansion or something like that. Sometimes one expansion is all you need. Matthew's Craig Marvel Zombies will have 350 minis roughly. Jesus, you're going to be paying for a while, my man. <laughs> I think he just issued a challenge, Dan. Support buying more games. That's my support group. Yeah. That would be a possibility. No? <laughs> so, yes, it's me. It's my first language. Now I am interested. Yeah, dude. Yeah. She's, she's sarcastic as hell, dude. Yeah. He... She'll have a great time on here. Aug system uh, from Barman and Turtles is really good. Just enough. Yeah, dude. And and what I like about that, Mike, and I think I said this on the stream, is that um, I think it's like the whole sharing of the dice system. I think that's easy. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's complex enough to be like, okay, yeah, what do we got to do? Okay, uh, we don't have any moves for barman, right? But Robin has some, so we're going to share that, right? I think that's the example I gave in there. That just little bit more complexity it makes it totally different. But even if you just take that whole system, it's it's simple enough. You're just rolling a bunch of dice, which I love. But that added complexity, which I think is really good for the game, comes with the terrain, comes with the status effect. So even though it's a simplistic game, that added stuff from chapter to chapter, scenario to scenario, is really going to make it a lot more thinky. Uh, but not too much that it's a brain burner. I think it hit a perfect balance. I think they did a really good job. Uh, spraying lighter fluid on the old uh, barbecue is fun until you uh, singe your eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, get in your car and come teach me burn cycle, please. Dan will have that out on his table for the next few weeks. But Galactus, yeah, man. I know. <laughs> when his wife and Dan go after him. No, nah, man, I'm good. I got I, my, I got super thick skin, dude. I got super thick skin. I don't care. He will do his next playthrough in a corner, yeah. With the lights off and stuff. <laughs> yeah, $75 a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jason says the shipping difference between uh, Marvel Zombies Pledge with Galactus and without is wild. Got everything else with single wave shipping. It was 80, 85 to ship. That doesn't sound too bad considering uh, what other people were saying. Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. From the pledge manager, I just got the core and the, what is it, the X Men thing. Pretty sure that's what I got. Yeah, that's what I got from the. Uh, now, does anybody know why they're not allowing people to open up their pledges? I thought before for a numerous other CMON games, uh, they were allowing you to, you know, you to modify your pledge. Am I wrong about that? Am I am I misremembering? But I thought they would allow you to do that. And for this one, they didn't. I, my pledge got locked in, and then I went to change the pledge, and then I wasn't able to. All right, Havana's got to run. Have fun. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Which is notoriously bad for shipping costs. Yeah. Yeah. I. Oh, oh, you mean Canada is notoriously bad for shipping costs. Okay. Okay. Is that right? I wouldn't have thought it was it was too, too bad. Hungry Pledge times two plus Galactus cost me $1,300 after shipping. Who can top that? Who can top that? That's a lot. That is a lot.
so I'm out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, Dan, right? Uh, just how much Zomis I do need. Um, you know, we all say that, but again, the FOMO gets you. I got a lot of second edition. Like Freddie said, Freddie's played the game a lot more than I have. And he hasn't gone through all the survivors. Uh, I'm not even... I haven't even scratched the surface of that. Scratched the surface. But speaking of that, I know I said a few weeks ago, I was maybe going to have another Zombicide second edition playthrough do the Untouchables, right? I think I laid out like a few characters. I was like Bruce Willis, Sly... Uh, there was a few other ones, maybe Arnold or something like that. Um, I think I was going to try to do like a cool Untouchables uh, Zombicide playthrough. I think that would be a lot of fun. <clears throat> I don't back Simon, no idea. Uh, MD2 is only happening because of you lot. <laughs> I appreciate all, all you that have backed it. Send it to me and I will paint it. Dan... Don't start it, dude. People will send you that stuff. Speaking of, I do still need to send you the uh, the few um, minis for Conan. I do remember being able to uh, change pledge in the past. Yeah, I know. I wanted to add plastic tokens, so I emailed them and they added... Oh. Oh. Freddy, okay. I might I might have to do that. I might have to email them then. That's more than I can afford currently. Yeah, I mean, dude, these things are so expensive, dude. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. I I think Freddie did a good uh thing. I think it was a few weeks ago or something like that. Um, but and I try to do this as well. Try to think about your, you know, your cost per play breakdown, right? Like if you have a game that costs $100 and you play it 10 times, it's still $10 a session, right? Sometimes you got to break it down like that to see, you know, just how expensive the game is. Make all the money painting on Marvel Zombies. Yeah, you might, dude. I did not, Mike. No, I did not. I don't even know too much about it, honestly, man. I don't know too much about it. Septima. Septima? However you say it. That's by uh, Mind Clash. Is that right? I reached out to Mind Clash uh, about Perseverance. Um, they said they didn't have any copies. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I could. I guess I could try. They did have some other ones. Like they had Tricarion and stuff like that. Uh, Anachrony. But honestly, right now, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'm... I don't know if I'm ready for those. Not ready, but... I don't know if I want to spend my time on those just right now. Uh, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future I will. What is my cost per play if I spend 200 on a game and never play it? <laughs> You're the math genius here. <laughs> you can't put a number on experience. Yeah, I guess I guess you could say that to a to an extent, Curtis. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But I, I think it's always good to, you know, think about it different ways sometimes. To on a game and never play it? I don't know, man. Like, maybe 50? 50 bucks? <laughs> See, with all this uh, Marvel Zombicide talk, I actually think it would, <laughs> it would be a uh, terrible idea. If Cthulhu Death May Die came out with a season three or reprint because of that would I'll probably be up there in price too. Yeah. Yeah, because you gotta you gotta think it would probably be more expensive, right? But that giant Cthulhu might not be as expensive um, as it is now on secondary market. I I have seen it for 300 That's the lowest I've seen for quite some time. I have seen it for 300 And honestly, the the, the little person on my shoulder, the little devil was like, get it, get it, just get it. Come on, just get it, just get it. But then I'm like, yeah, but there's like also Chronicles of Drunagar that I got to pay for and stuff like that. That's an entire, that's an entire all in, not all in. I guess it could be an entire all in for some games. Yeah, and I think I'd be with you, Curtis. 
yeah, no matter what it is, I, I, that's such a fun game. Black box is always the old positive experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cthulhu Death May Die, man. I really need to get that out. Curtis Death May Die. I'd be all in on that one. Oh, man. Yeah, see, this is fun. I like, I like chatting with you guys like this. Uh, it, Mike is... Sep is it Septima? I don't know. Septima. Is that still live? Like, is he, can you still pledge for that? Name Jason. Yeah, I think it was, dude. I think it was named Jason. Yeah. Uh, Jason, gee, man, yeah, Jason went all in on uh, Marvel Zombies too, man. Jason Stewart, yeah. Yeah, that dude, he really uh he really goes hard for some of those games, doesn't he? He really pushes it too. And he's been like super active with like, check out this uh Kickstarter. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like posting in the in the Kickstarter channel. <laughs> uh DMD season three wouldn't be too bad. Not like they come at us with another uh giant old one statue. Ah, uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they would do like, you know, the same one, offering the same one. I'm not sure. I don't think they'd offer a different one. It's an easier Mind Clash game. Okay. Oh, it launched today. Oh, okay. Okay. See, dude, like I, I've honestly been staying off of Kickstarter and GameFound and it's been nice. It's been nice. It's it's just it's just another. If I get on there and I start scrolling, I'll be like, oh yeah, let's just go in for a dollar. Oh, let's go in for a dollar. Let's go in for a dollar. Twenty twenty projects later, you know, I spent thirty dollars. Right, math genius, big brain right here. Uh, little Dever, devil steward on my shoulder, yeah. I'd buy a giant haster. Yeah. I mean, whatever giant mini they'd offer, I'd buy, right? Just because you know if you don't pick it up, it's going to be $1,000 on the secondary market. Jason, I'm sure they paid for it a lot. Uh, paid for it. They love money. Yeah, I think I think Jason works at Game Steward. I think he does, honestly. Giant haster from uh, Peterson Games. Which one was that, Curtis? The giant haster. Was that for uh, Cthulhu Wars? I got Cthulhu Wars coming as well. I'm hoping that still makes it. It should. It should make it. But I know they were having... Uh, that was in production hell as well. That's been in there for a long time. First time it was a limited run. Uh, the time it seems... Uh, print to demand. This time it seems print to demand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think if they came back, I think they would offer it again. If they ever came back. I don't know if they're ever coming back, though. But wait, wasn't there a teaser or something like that? Somebody had? Like there was a post or something like that that then was deleted? I think that was the case. I think it was something like that. I did, Dan. Yeah, I did. I did. So the story was we witnessed this guy and this young uh, uh, this young gentleman battling, right? Dueling it out. Uh, the young guy got the better of him. And then we asked him if he knew anything about this ship, this mysterious ship in the backdrop that Solomon Cain witnessed. Uh, the guy, the kid didn't know too much about it. However... The guy that he was dueling stole his woman, right? So the young kid, uh, he was lured in by this guy who said basically like, somebody else took your woman, come with me. 
and they they were like following around this path and we were trying to eavesdrop to hear more information about the boat. We didn't hear a damn thing, but we did get enough light tokens on the discovery card that we needed to advance to a certain section of the story. We performed the story. We illuminated our path with all six light tokens. Pretty good. And uh, then we noticed that they slipped out of a window. I think it was a window. Um, and then they entered this place in the mansion, which they went into. And we noticed some, uh, I think they went into a secret door. And we had to follow them into the secret door. And that's that's kind of where we left off. Cthulhu Wars and Planet Apocalypse. Uh, it's massive. Yeah. Yeah, so Curtis, I'm, I'm actually in on Planet Apocalypse 2. I only got one of the expansions, though. I only got one of the expansions. So it was two expansions that came in there. And I was just thinking that I would get the other expansion on Peterson Games' website when that came out. I didn't want to drop all the money on the expansions just because that's when I was starting to become aware of their issues. So I was like, uh, let's just go in for half of it. Cthulhu Wars uh, isn't pretty expensive too. Yeah, it's got huge minis. Ton of expansions too. Um, yeah, it's got a it's got a lot of expansions. Yep. Haster is gnarly. Uh, I I don't know if I know that one. Purchase if you want all in. Yeah. I got a decent amount for that one too, Curtis. I think I'm in for like four something, almost 500. I got a lot of money sunk into Peterson Games campaigns right now. I got a lot for Cthulhu Wars. I got the Planet Apocalypse 2 that I was just talking about, as well as Dinosaur 1944, which looks pretty crazy. It was kind of like a spin on Planet Apocalypse, but instead it's dinosaurs with like World War II like army men. <laughs> like it just looked absolutely insane. But it had a tower defense element as well, like Planet Apocalypse. And I think sim very similar thing. So I was like, you know what? Let's let's do it. Let's do it. But it looks it looks really cool. Um, that's gonna be a big no for me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, Providence. Yeah, Dan. Have you ever played like two handed with other virtues? I've only played this game with Providence. I've only used Providence, and I've loved it. Providence is solid, solid virtue. Nice job. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate that. For over a month now. Uh, are you are you saying uh, from their website? Yeah, if you've ordered directly from their website, you're going to be waiting a long time, dude. A long time. Dinosaurs, yeah. What's up, Michael? Yeah, man, dude. They look sick, too. They look really cool. It wasn't that expensive for the... Uh, I did go all in. It wasn't that expensive for it. I want to say it was still like under $200. Call of Cthulhu uh, Terror Pass from Peterson Games. Looks really cool. I haven't heard of that, dude. Only Providence. So good. Yeah, dude. Providence, solid. Solid virtue. Yeah, I love her. I did also get to scratch the itch of uh, Cthulhu Wars. I did get the mini version. I did get Duel. So I learned how to play. This is a fun one. This is really good. This is the exact same, as far as I'm aware... Maybe with some minor tweaks. Uh, the exact same as Cthulhu Wars, the full version. It's just made for a head-to-head. -head. And they did a fantastic job. It's got standees, so I know it's right up Curtis's alley. Um, but they did a great job. They did a great job with this. I only have this. I know there's a few other expansions as well. But I think it's a, basically the same idea. I really enjoy it. I can really see me and my buddies really liking that one. Sounds badass. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, it looks it looks so cool with some of the minis on there. They're large too. Whew. D D style RPG. Oh, maybe it is, yeah. Yeah, because they were they have some RPG uh stuff on their site, don't they? Yeah, yeah, Anthony, dude, love dinosaurs, man. Dinosaur. 
badass. <laughs> I had to jump in, dude. I was like, dude, this looks so cool. This looks so cool. See, in the RPG type stuff, uh, the only thing I do as far as that is D&D uh, with my buddies every Saturday through Skype. And it's a website called Roll20. That's where we do D&D every Saturday. But my buddies, the DM, um, I just, I, those, that's the only group that I get with to do stuff like that. So uh, we don't have any time to squeeze in another RPG. But overall, I like the idea of RPGs. Have you not played the full version? I have not. No, dude. I have not. Nope. I, that's why I got the duel to try it out. Nope. Never played Cthulhu Wars. Nope. It is. Yeah, I'm on my second one. Malicious Mango. No. No. No, I love these things. I love these things, Dan. Yeah, it is Prickly Pear. It is the... Uh, Masagave Classica. Yeah, man. Masagave Classica. No, I never played Curtis. Never played. Never played. I want to, though, man. I really want to. I want to get some buddies. I want to play that. I think that's going to be a game we really enjoy. Uh, my buddy Tim was talking, and the thing is, I wish, I wish they bought more games, right? Because then I could save a lot of money. Uh, my one buddy was talking about buying Blood Rage. He likes that game so much. Problem is, I already got Blood Rage, bro. Buy something else. She with a uh, chunky minis. Yeah, I know, dude. I'm, I'm, I love those kind of minis, dude. And I'm seriously, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about that one. I forget what I got for it. I got I got a few things for it. I got a few uh, expansions. I didn't get too many. I didn't go overboard, but I think I did add um, maybe like two other factions or something like that. I think I added another map. I'm usually a fan of maps as well. That can really change out you know how you're moving around a board and stuff like that. I'm usually a fan of like adding maps to stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Can I even can I even look to see what I went in for? I forgot what the uh, it's the Damon Salton, right? Uh, and they use they use their own pledge manager too, which is just absolute trash. Pledgemaster Games, I think it is. Yeah. I just I hate I hate their pledge manager, dude. Let's see. Okay, so maybe I use the other. I think I use a different email. Um, let's see. Now, good lord. Let's try this. Okay, here we go. So I did. Um, products, okay, so it's like 420, I'm in 420, I got the Cthulhu Wars, it's the 04, Damon Sultan Faction, the Elder Shogoth, I got the Opener of the Way, I got the oversized three to five player earth map because I, I love the idea. One of the things I heard is it can get too crowded on the board. So I got that. I got the Eldridge Gate pack, the Ugoth map. I got the High Priests. Um, 
I got some battle dice. And that's all I got. So that's what I got. So it looks like it's going to be two additional factions and one additional map. Also with the with the gates, I guess to make it be able to see better or something like that, the gates on the board and the high priest. So that's what I got. Uh, let's see. One, get friends, have them buy board games, drink beer while playing with friends. But yeah, that's it, Dan. That's all the steps you need in life, man. You be a happy man. You made me a happy man. Was that from uh, Braveheart? I'm a happy man. <laughs> and, and then he passed away. I've got the Wind Waker uh, and the Opener of the Way expansions. Yeah, okay. So I added the wind, uh, the Opener of the Way. I heard the Wind Waker was also a good one to get. I'll pick up the uh, Sleeper expansion and Damon Salton. Okay. Yeah, I think they will. I think they will. I know they had problems and it was like there was a time where it was like I was really nervous about it, but they keep posting uh, updates with like progression of the minis and stuff like that. I know that doesn't mean, you know, it's definitely going to ship or whatever, but they're not still saying stuff like, you know, we're, we're having problems and stuff like that. Got to get ands in. I know, dude. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll tell you what. Okay. What is it? Wasn't there wasn't there just a deal on it or something like that? I think I found I know Nate, you and Mike, were you guys talking about uh what was it? The the new age. I think I saw on eBay a used copy. I'm not opposed to used copies. Uh for slightly hold the phone. Street Masters Kickstarter. Oh, I gotta stay off of eBay, dude. Street Masters Kickstarter and Stretch Goals. It's a bid. 150 Canadian. 116 US. It's a bid though. It's got another four days about. Zero bids. <sighs> yeah, I might go in for this one. I don't know. I'm super scared Blacklist is not going to deliver this. I'm super scared about that. Uh, yeah, I'm watching. I'll watch that. All right. I got to get off of this. Look at this. Solomon Kane Arata Pack. $50. Dude, you're smoking. You're smoking, man. Let's see. Aeon's End. New Age. I think there was like a used copy for like, I want to say like 40 something bucks. There's one for 58. I think I will just buy the core. I think I'm just going to buy the core game. Didn't you guys say Amazon had it cheap? Forty three. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. Forty three bucks. Uh, let's see. And then second edition. Monday. I'll be here Monday, right? All right. All right. Aeon's end is uh is bought. Um let's see. While well, I'm off the bed, uh gents. All right, Curtis. Good stream as always. I think Solomon is a pass for me though, but it's a good watch. Thank you, Curtis. Really appreciate it, man. I'll catch you on the Discord, brother. Have a good one. Baron Classics are both really good deck builders and both uh, relatively cheap to get into. Yeah, so I just got, I just bought Aeon's End. There you go. Anthony, Nate, Mike, got it. It's done. It's done. It'll be here Monday. What's up, Rufus? 
What's up, man? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just I just bought Aeon Zen, Rufus. Oh, Raphael, man, I had the screen. Oh, man. I had the uh, the screen closed. Or else I would have checked... Uh, I would have checked Cardos. Uh, you can get original core and Zen for 35. Oh. Yeah, I just got it for like 40. I got it for 40 something off Amazon. I still, I still. And welcome to the brotherhood. Yeah, so I got it. It's on the way. It's on the way. It'll be here Monday. Ugh. I'm going to have to do another, I think by the end of the month, I'm going to have to do, do another video going over the all the games I got. It's going to be a long list this month. Yeah, man, I'm excited. You guys keep talking about it. I'm pumped, man. We'll be mailed to you shortly. Yeah, man. Yeah, I hear you, dude. Blood back contract. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That is funny. Board game Oracle is your uh, friend. Yeah, wasn't that the one that uh, like compared prices or something, Raphael? I think I've used that before. I think I've used that before, but yeah, maybe I should start. Yeah, uh. yeah, and usually, you know what? Usually, I don't. I'm not too fond of Amazon because with Amazon, dude, they just throw your throw the box in a cardboard box. I've seen that so many times. If there is enough space, they will put like one little inflated, uh, you know, plastic, whatever it's called, in the box with it. But it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Tell Rageborn I said hi. Rageborn, okay. All right, I guess I'll find out. Some robot, yeah, you're right, Rufus. Yeah, I know, dude. This is a good one. Uh, one of the better deck builders I've played. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah, we'll check it out when we get when it gets here. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to crack it open. That might be one. Maybe I can bring on vacation. I don't know. I was thinking about possibly bringing a game, uh, and just leaving it in the car. You know, if my wife has had a few drinks, she'd be like, oh, "I'm gonna bring a board game out here." You know, maybe I'll bring a uh, try to learn Aeon Z. Maybe that'll be it. All right. All right, guys. Looks like it's 12.05. I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, yeah, so the plan is, just to recap, um, most of the time is Amazon costs more than a game store. However, sometimes like today, I don't know, man. Sometimes like, you mean like a game store, like an online store? I have been I have been finding you're right. I feel like some time ago Amazon had some better deals, but it does seem like nowadays, uh, dude, like miniature market game nerds, uh, I think they have like dude fantastic prices. Very good, very good. So yeah, just to recap again, guys. Um, next week I am gonna be on vacation. There's not gonna be any streams next week. Uh, at least that's the plan. Um, there always, always is a possibility there is a pop-up stream, right? And I'll just say like on the Discord, hey, I'm going to have a stream tonight. You know, I'll throw something up on YouTube and we'll get going. Uh, but the plan right now is to not do anything next week. I may, I might do some other, some other sort of recorded video. I don't know yet. I might just be like, screw it. Let's just take the entire time off. If I do do a video, it might be like opening up Deep Madness. We'll see. But regardless, I will be back to streaming the week after. So that is going to be... Next week is the week of the 19th to 25th. So we're talking June 27th. We're talking June 27th. I'll be back with my wife to do a, it's either the 27th or the 28th to do a live stream of Super Fantasy Brawl. That's the plan at least right now. That could change, but that's what to expect at least right now. So that's the plan. So with that being said, I'll catch all of you watching. Then 
everybody that's part of the Patreon. I'll catch you on the Discord. Look forward to talking to you guys further. Um, see, I'll still approve of this vacation you speak of. Uh, but next time, you will need to send the request through the proper HR channels. Thanks. Dan, I, I did forget you were managing the HR for um, Bruise and Board Games. So, yeah, I'll be sure to do that, bro. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Uh, it's been a blast. I do like this sort of uh, talking after the streams. So, maybe I actually should do like some sort of just... Hey, we're not even playing a game, maybe just like a Q&A, and we could just kind of shoot the shit for a long time, right? So I think that we that could be a lot of fun. Or just maybe go over some Kickstarters. Maybe I can pull up some screens. We can take a look all together. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Have a great week next week, great uh, weekend. Take care. Stay out of the heat. Stay cool. Thanks for watching. Until next time, grab some brews, play some games. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, guys. Peace.